Hey everybody, I'm Mike. I'm Tim. I'm John. Yes. And this is the Board Game Rundown, and we are live from our basements because we cover games from top to bottom. Uh, John, I didn't ask because you told me you're in Nevada. I know yeah. for a fact they do not have basements in Nevada. Uh, yeah, like it's rarer than, you know, we're not really <laughs> and we're the storms. Tim and I are the weirdos, and we've always made a joke about streaming in our basement, so we've ran with it ever since. As everybody can see, we've got a guest with us, and it's John Wood, and he's a published designer. I am. Uh, so uh, he wanted to come on the show and talk about a game he's coming out. We're going to discuss small box games, which was his idea, and we'll probably learn a little bit about John, too. How's everybody doing? Go for it, John. Uh, I am doing great uh, in general. Uh, a little nervous. Uh, I've done like some podcasts here and there, but this is like my first like kind of. I was on a smaller channel called Get Game, and they're run by some friends. And um, oh, right on. Uh, yeah, uh, but I'm good. Uh, staying busy. Um, a, a lot of publishers want my ear for some things because I've been I, I, I've been hustling. I've been hustling. nice. Yeah, that's that's a uh, that's a good problem to have. That is a very good problem to have. So Thing 12 Games, they're a fan of you, John. Uh, I'm a fan of them. <laughs> hey, mutual. you said uh, you said you were on Gateway Gamer, Barry's show? No, I was on Get Gaming. Get Gaming, sorry. I yeah. misheard you. Yeah. Cool. Good deal. Wayne's with us. He's on another podcast called Beans and Dice. Uh, we had a fun feature with them last week, actually. Uh, thanks for that, Wayne. Andrew's with us. He's one of our regulars. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, so, so Tim, what's up? We haven't yeah. heard from you yeah. much yet. Well, hey, I'm just, I was giving the floor to John. He's here. He's our guest. Uh, not much, man. I mean, like you, my household is recovering from Monday night basketball. We'll talk about that later, I'm sure. Um, yeah. We are going to goof around with like a few new things. There was something that, that Beans and Dice podcast that did that we that Mike and I really liked, and we're going to try it tonight, which is sort of we're going to cap off the show with a little rant. You know, either it can be uh, it can be a nerd rant, it can be any kind of rant you want. Um, I do want to uh, just say uh, I just got a very cool game in the mail today. I haven't played it yet, so but I'm going to say it looks cool. I won't say that it is cool yet, but it looks really cool. Have it's, you gone through the rule book? I have. Okay. I have. It's called Party Wanted. Oh. And uh, uh, so we we got this for to to review. Uh, it's from Tavern Crawl Games. And you basically, you're picking like an adventurer and you're going through different tiers to get through the Pyramid of Chaos. And so you're going to explore these different lands and then you're going to get to a boss. And then you fight the boss and then you're going to level up and then you're going to go through the next tier and you're going to fight a boss. You're going to level up and you're going to go through again, fight a boss, level up. And, but the, uh, the land cards, they have three different things, uh, that you can do. Two of them are optional. So you, there's a social thing. So everybody might have to, has the option to do this social thing. It might be like, what's the weirdest thing a child has said to you. And so then everybody kind of real quick, like one minute goes around anybody that decides to participate, gets uh, the reward for participating. Then there's the action. You, everybody has to take that action. You got to do something uh, uh, like very game, more game related. And then there's like a drinking challenge. So if you want, if you inclined, you are, you know, take a drink, get, draw a card, you know, kind of thing. Uh, the, the social and the drinking are optional. The action card is a must. Uh, supposed to be a pretty light, straightforward kind of dungeon crawly game, but with the social interaction, which makes it more of a party game. And I enjoy social interaction. I enjoy, like, to me, this sounds like a really fun kind of icebreaker game. If I'm out uh, at, at a meetup or a con and uh, it's like, Hey man, like, let's play this. Let's get to know, get to know each other and uh, goof around. So anyways, I'm excited to look at it uh, and play it. I really kind of like that shiny foily. That is, is it cool. cooperative. Yes. Straight co-op. Oh, and they e they even sent a play mat. So you go through the different tiers and then you get the different rewards and you fight the bosses and what is the things. art that's next to those like boxes? Like what's what that mean? guy on the top left? What this is dude? that thing? Are those yes. 
Those are like creatures. One. Yeah, Those are they're just, awesome. Yeah, it's it's cool art, man. So got my animals. Nice. I thought at first this was going to be Andrew Styles because he's one of our more common um, Facebook users, but because of this comment, I'm pretty sure it's Stephen Fortenberry. Oh yeah, he probably. I think he does do pinball. <laughs> So, um, so John, um, you have one published game and a couple more coming out this year. I do. Fingers crossed for this year. It has been a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, so yeah, my first game, Making Manhattan, um, was signed in 2020 and came out in 2021. Um, it seems to be pretty doing pretty well uh it's sold out twice now uh, i believe it's nice. currently sold out on the on the store last time i checked well done um thank you yeah uh it's kind of been been being viewed as like um um like a hidden gem in their catalog uh, is what a lot nice. of people are saying um it doesn't seem to be sold much 7.1 seems pretty solid for my first game which is nice Absolutely. um yeah i love it i got some expansions made for it and we'll see if we'll see if they ever see the light of day i might mm -hmm. just drop the files into the into the main page but yeah um it's a simple really simple drafting game um uh, made for two players and on your turn you just draft from one of three cards and decide if you want to put it on top middle or bottom and then depending on where you put it the card's powers change so uh, if you put it on top it could just be worth a flat three points but if you put it in the middle uh it could say like you know two points for every green card you have on your left side of your city sort of like that okay um, yeah interesting I, yeah it's uh it was it was one of my earlier like designs that had like potential uh my earliest is actually i found bigfoot um from where i live um i'm actually very fortunate to have like extremely good designers around me so like steven aramini lives here danny divine lives here mm -hmm. uh johnny pack lives here um nice. and uh i remember showing them some of these games and um and uh, they were like, oh, these are like not bad, actually. And I was like, oh, I'm actually doing it. Yeah, I'm making games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I feel a lot. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. You've got to you've got to learn. you got to go through the growing pains. It's that persistence, you know, that it, it, every, like anything, anything worth doing can be a grind sometimes, right? Totally. But, but you hone your skills. I mean, it's not an accident that that your game is selling out. You know, I mean, that's that's a fruit of your labor. Mm -hmm. uh, so be proud that. of that. Absolutely. Yeah, I Money am. talks, man. Absolutely. That's really cool. And of course, this being published by Button Shy, I uh, I'm very confused as to why you pick small box games. So yeah, well, so just <laughs> as like a thing, you know. Uh I love small games. I generally make small games. Um awesome. I want games that are easy to set up and uh quick to play generally. Because I am of the opinion like I want my games to get played a lot as opposed mm -hmm. to, you know, like maybe that one time thing and then it's done. Um, that's just like a personal thing, but yeah, I no. love, I love small box games for sure. I'm, I mean, like we are literally playing on Friday, a game that you play like once a year because, and it's an appointment kind of thing. We, you plan everybody, we lock them in and we're like, okay guys, we're going to play Dune. Yeah. I've, you know? I've, I've played Twilight Imperium and I'm good. Same. Like I played it once. I'm all right. I, sure. I, I don't want to see that for my games. I don't want my games to get dusty. I'm good for like Twilight Imperium once a year. I'm also not a designer, so I don't, you know, but like games that I buy, I do like to buy a lot of lighter to medium weight games personally, because, um, when I'm not with the guys that I do the show with, I'm with my in-laws or different family members and they're, they like games. They don't, they're not fanatical about games like I am, but they like games. So your style of game is so much more appealing because it's like a five minute teach and, and we're in, we're running there's not even time for their eyes to glaze over, you know, and we can play it, re-rack, play again, uh, you know, so. Yeah, uh, if you can get it tabled more, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Uh, I also tend to play with, like, lighter to medium weight at most gamers. Um, I do have, like, heavier games for the people in my life that are more interested. My favorite game, like, my very favorite games are heavy. Um, on your guys' set, or I don't know whose house that is, uh, you guys have Fury of Dracula, and that's actually my favorite game. Oh, that's one of my wow. favorite games. I love it. That's I got my it. Favorite. hate knowing that's still a drink. Uh, yeah. I've, well, I've, I've but, got mine over yeah. here. Mike's, Mike's got one. I've got one over here. It might just be off camera. Maybe it's the amazing no, thing is, 
I completely agree with you. And for me, it's just from a practicality standpoint. I buy things to use them. I want to play my games. I buy them to play them. I don't buy a lot of games just for my collection. It's, it's, totally. I want to play the games in my collection. And so I really like where you're coming from with that. You, you, you design games that you know will get played. And you're right. Mm -hmm. Small box games definitely get played a lot uh, with a lot of my friends as well. Totally. Um, and a lot of it too is like, um, I'll also like play games just for research. Like what kind of games are out there? Oh, um, hell I, view, yeah. I, I view like designers yeah. as like almost like chefs in a way, like in order to like know what good food tastes like, you need to try good food. Mm -hmm. And in order to make good games, you need to play good right. games. And a, a long, big game, while it might be good, um, if I'm doing it almost just for like research purposes, it's like this long setup. I got to like learn all these intricate rules. And then within like an hour, I've seen like what I've needed to see. Like I've gleaned what I needed to glean from this game. And I'm like, well, now I've just got this giant box in front of me. What do I do? That kind of thing. And this is You're why kinda... you're friends with Andrew Styles, because <laughs> Andrew, yes. Andrew has a very complicated uh, or complex palette, right? Or refined. Yeah. Uh, uh, Andrew and I uh, co-design often together. Uh, a yeah. lot of, I have like eight games signed or something. And I think at least two of them are with him. Oh, right uh, on. Yeah. I love designing with Andrew. Andrew's a great guy. I, the, uh, the couple of times that I've had the pleasure of hanging out with him. I mean, it has been that it has been a pleasure. He's an awesome dude. Uh, obviously he's the reason that we are hanging out tonight. Yeah. Um, Sure. But uh, yeah, he's a great dude. I love him. And that's the other great thing about this community, because you mentioned being uh, fortunate enough to like be regional to a bunch of other designers. And for the most part, like everybody just kind of wants to help everybody out, you know, and like contribute and, you know, coexist, you know, and like, let's just put out better games and more fun games. And, you know, yeah. and it, it's really nice. It's, I yeah. love the community. It is a wonderful for sure. Um, it is nice that like, uh you know i remember like looking back at like some of like the early um feedback i got from people and it was like oh, i don't know even know what i'm doing Ugh. oh sure but then it came from like a place of like hey they like really care about your game like critical mm -hmm. feedback is so mm -hmm. good um, absolutely yeah it shows that they yeah. care. and you know also right and that's the wonderful and terrible thing about creating anything whether it's a game or a podcast or a, writing a book is you are you're putting this out there like okay please don't destroy my baby and inevitably at some point in time somebody's gonna step on that baby uh you know but usually for the better i mean there's trolls but yeah you know um my whole thing with like games that i put out like uh i have like a couple things first off i have to love it if i don't love mm -hmm. the game if i don't want to play it no one else is going to want to play it right that's my that's my big thing if i if i find myself enjoying it someone else will maybe not everyone and like making manhattan of my games is, is a slightly more narrow um like like for the for the tastes or whatever oh um, sure but i made that like more for me and it was more like a challenge for myself um and well then, you say more for you and more narrow yet it keeps selling out so yeah well don't be too well, you i mean i understand you're being humble and reasonable but i mean that's be proud of that that's uh well like i found bigfoot like i want everyone and their mother to get this game oh like, hell yeah that's, i have the, like it's like of my games it is one of the most mass markety uh like it oh has sure kind of potential uh so like between that and making manhattan i'm like well i'll usually recommend i found big or um, i found big fit. oh okay uh the other thing is uh when someone like so I, I go through bgg all the time i check on my games at least once a week if not more mm -hmm. um seeing if like my publisher came back from like a convention and if people rated it um seeing like what's going on with making manhattan seeing if anybody has questions that kind of thing mm -hmm. and sometimes like a game will get like a lower score like i got a couple fives recently but then i like go to the, like, these users and i look at like what they give fives and they're given like wingspan five they're given oh, like, sure. Boomhaven five i'm like i'm in good company it's all yeah good. yeah yeah it's uh, yeah right there there there's trolls I, that's all i'll say yeah. is there's trolls well i I don't even know if it's trolling. It could just not every game is for every person, and that's okay. Um, yeah, for sure, totally true. Hundred percent. There are, there are true. some trolls, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's like the people that go on, and it's like, well, this is the number one game. It must suck. I'm going to give it a, you know, a one. And it's like, all right, calm down. Yeah. Yeah. I want to balance out the tens, that are, and it hasn't been published yet. I've I've uh, never yeah. I've never played this, but I know it can't be better than my favorite game. One. 
Uh, yeah, that is like when, uh, like back when, I don't know, like 2022 20, maybe or whatever, when it was like Brass and Gloomhaven were like fighting uh-huh. and then people started like like nigging the one that they wanted to lose. I'm like, yeah. who cares? <laughs> yeah. I mean, isn't it more fun to just play a board game than to get online and troll, you know, other yeah. internet nerds like we're all, myself? We're all nerds, so we just take it a little too far. We're a little uh, obsessive. And that's fair. That's, totally, that's a fair assessment. Uh, I do want to say, I know Mike highlighted it, but uh, Eric, good to see you, man. Um, I met Eric at Origins last year, and that's actually when I met Andrew. Um, and uh, really enjoyed playing their game. It's signed, but I won't go too much else. In, I won't talk too much more about it because I don't want to get in trouble for spoiling stuff maybe that is not supposed uh-huh. to be spoiled, right? Yeah. Um, so I have one more question for you. We can kind of ease into the topic, but sure. I just, I'm curious about this because uh, I, I apologize in advance for the name drop, but I got a chance to like interview Eric Lang last summer mm-hmm. and Eric was, um, it was really interesting to talk to him because obviously he's a very well-established designer, right? You know, like he's one of the five that most people could name off the top of their heads, right? Like a lot of ton of people can name game designers, but Eric could come up pretty easily. Wonderful, quirky, wild dude. Uh, he was a great time. I thought it was really interesting because he has been trying to like crack the mass market, you know, uh, uh, niche. So when you so you design games and and you do not self publish right you are you are sending them to publisher or getting them signed with publishers for the most part yeah so when you when you design games are you is that a thing in your mind where you're like okay so I need to keep the components level level low uh do you know uh, and things like that so you know that your game is more cost effective and therefore maybe more appealing to be signed. I don't mean uh, to sound like that to sound like a loaded question. I was just no, wondering I if it. that enters. No, I, I think that's a great question. Um, yeah. So when I design, um, so first off, I want to make the game I want to make. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I used to like restrict myself, but I, I've like, as a designer, as I've grown, I've been like, well, this game wants more cards and the more cards that's going to happen. That's it. What That is what it is. Um, I tend to design small because that's the way I like to design clever, uh, mm-hmm. small, clever games. And it just happens to be like, I just happen to make card games in general, which are less, you know, like, like I don't make miniatures games or whatever. Sure. Um, I, there is a, a publisher that lives in town, Tucker. Uh, he, he runs the publishing company Card Lords. Um, and they, uh, well, I guess it would be uh, he, when I first started designing, when I found out that he lived in town and we started, um, he started like critiquing my games and stuff he kind of told me about things about like card sheets and whatever like oh right yeah like like uh, you know this is how many cards are in a sheet and like so like if you go over this it's going to cost the publisher x more so you might as well just go all the way with it that kind of yeah. thing yeah that so blew I my mind when i learned about card sheets yeah it was yeah and like that's why like there are jokers in like a pack of cards because like right. the way they print they're like well we got these extra two let's just throw some jokers in there mm-hmm. um yeah, so I always do try to keep like the publisher in mind. I am getting into self-publishing. I'm actually self-publishing a game with uh, with Andrew, so it's a co-design of ours that I'm going to end up publishing. Um, that I'm just now starting like to learn like the processes of. Sure. And so like looking at costs and things, I do think mm-hmm. that I'm very fortunate. Like, um, like when I pitch to a, a publisher, I'm like, hey, it's like 81 cards, a couple tokens, and then your rule book, and that's it. And that's usually like not like a big risk for them. Right. And obviously, right. like the like I can't imagine like getting molds for things or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, terrifying for sure. I mean, I I I guess I kind of knew some of the answer already because you when you were talking, you were talking about you design games you like and you tend to like these kind of games and you mm-hmm. want to get them played. So it's really nice that that naturally kind of flows into a beneficial. You know, I it that at least gives you a. I would have to imagine with most publishers that you pitch to, and obviously you're going to be pitching to publishers that you think jive you know, like your, your, your game will jive with their catalog, but like, um, but obviously, you know, if if I rolled into a a publishing company with a game to pitch and it's got 112 miniatures, you know, and all this stuff, like all these like extra tokens and chits and, you know, and this and that, well, it's like, well, they're probably not going to just do Jimmy off the street. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Um, I was, I, so I used to live in Sacramento and mm-hmm. I was like part of like the board game group there. And uh, there was this guy, there's this guy and his girlfriend that came in and they set up this game. Uh, they were like new to the group or whatever. And they're like, we have this game. 
It's like got a bunch of components. We hope that you like it. And it was like a parody of board games. Like I actually felt like I was being pranked because it was like roll and move with a D4. Were you was playing like, Cones of Dunshire? <laughs> kind of, yeah. Um, and it was like it was like not the worst game ever. Like I could see what they were trying to do. It needs to be like an app. It was kind of like Mario Party esque. Oh, okay. Um, but we gave them this feedback, and I was like, hey, like before I get into this, what kind of feed? Like, are you looking to? Um, are you looking to publish this yourself? Or are you looking to like? get the signed and he's like well i'd like to get the signed and when we were done i had to be like hey like as it stands no publisher is going to want to touch this you have like 50 tiles you have like 30 decks of cards you have all of these extra things that are going to rack up for a publisher and um for for starting out designers um i definitely recommend like starting small mm -hmm. um that's what i had to do um and like then once like your name gets out there a little bit and like you're you're known for doing like good games or whatever then you can like kind of make like a game that you really want to make yeah and you can be like okay here's here's my game with a thousand miniatures but like i have the track record to prove it like right it's, you're not just going to be throwing your money into a pit that kind yeah, of thing. yeah yeah well i mean again i'll just keep using eric as an example but if eric lang walks into a game publisher and is like i've got the next best war game everybody's going to go okay we're listening yeah they'll at least yeah. look yeah for sure for sure. It's not a slam dunk, but they're not going to slam the door on him like they would me if I've never published anything. Yeah. Um, I, um, I, uh, I've been like sending like some cold emails to publishers and, and sometimes like, I just won't get responses. Mm. I'm, I'm hoping with, I found Bigfoot that'll change. Um, but, uh, I was asking Andrew actually, I was like, Hey, could I get a contact with one of your publishers? And he's like, yeah, I just sent him an email. But like my name, so my name is John Wood and, uh, Josh Wood is the guy that did cat lady. I met him. Oh. And uh, uh, people get us like confused a lot, and so uh, Andrew asked the publisher, like, "Hey, can can John Wood send send some games to you for you to look at?" And they said, "Yeah, we love Cat Lady." Like, like, "Oh no!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Okay, so John, I want to hear more about I uh, I found Bigfoot because this is your next project. This is coming out next month. And I just want to tell Hold you, on. name alone, you've got me. So tell me about. Yeah, Bigfoot. and I kind of love the art on that box as well not gonna so this lie. is this is like prototype ish art this was like the last prototype before like the final version or whatever so it'll actually even look better than this honestly Lies. Uh, it'll also be a little smaller it'll at least, at least it'll probably be at least half size we'll see because we are aiming for mass market so there's mm. like this weird thing of like you know like why did splendor keep the box size that it did right because it's kind of going for mass markety um yeah so i found bigfoot um is uh coming out from thing 12 games uh, love them. Uh, we're going to be working together a lot. They have like four of my games. Um, uh, in the game, you are uh, doing one of two possible actions. So these cards are in a grid. And on your turn, you're either grabbing a card or using cards that are already in your hand that match the grid in some way. So um, each card, I'll kind of show you some examples because the art is great and I got to show it off. Um, so like each card has two like variables on it. So this is the Yeti, right? So the Yeti is both a Yeti here and then like this border is red. So this card can either be used for red or Yeti if it's in my hand. So when I draw it, I would have I would have it here or whatever. And then I'd go to this grid. Um, when I play the card, um, I can either play it for its Yeti or its red. And the interesting part of the game, the hook of the game, is there's this little board here that comes with it. And so you can see that there's like this Yeti track here and this red leather track. Let's see how the camera goes here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so when you make these matches, you're matching the cards in your hand to the cards on the grid, and you're going to take them all as score. But the, the, the hook of the game is when you make a match in a lane, it actually pushes up this little token that's going to like, so let's say I did Yeti three, it would cover up three. Now people have to go higher than what I previously mm. did. And cards in your hand count against your score at the end of the game. So it's like this rush to get cards out as fast as you can, but the board is going to slowly tighten up. And then, so there's like a little bit of like this push your luck thing of like, well, if just one more black card appears in the grid, then I can make a five and then I have no cards in hand, but it's like trying to make that balance. Uh, I'm, I'm really proud of this. This is like my first, like really good game. Um, I, uh, struggled for like four years of like, cause like I found out like design was what I wanted to do. And um, I found Bigfoot was like the first game I showed to the designers and they're like, this is pretty good. Um, I got top 15 in the contest for making Manhattan. I didn't get top three and then he didn't contact me about publishing. So I went to, so I was like feeling really low about myself. I went to mm -hmm. a convention and I brought the game that would become I found Bigfoot uh, with me. Cause I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to this convention. If I don't get a game signed, I'm just going to stop. 
Um, so I showed, uh, I found Bigfoot to um, Thing 12 and they're like, we love this. They're like, we, we absolutely love this. And then um, I got back home. So uh, there's this convention called Gamma and it used to take place in Reno. So it was uh-huh. in my backyard, which was nice. Um, I get home from Gamma that week after after basically getting a soft handshake from Thing 12 and Button Shy contacts me and they're like, hey, we won't make Manhattan. So I went from zero to two in the same week. Nice. I had, like, nice. I had to go through like this whole character arc of like, am I not good enough? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Here's some more art. We got the Chupacabra here. I love him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The That's art is awesome. honestly stellar. I'm gonna save some some uh, some of the other art for when people get the game, but uh, oh hell yeah, this looks sad. amazing though. This looks, I've heard good things. Here's the thing: is I've been hearing about this this uh, game for a minute, and I think it's from Andrew and somebody else was telling me about it. So the, there's been a little bit of like quiet buzz about like, oh, have you seen? I found Bigfoot, and uh, yeah. originally I just thought they were squatchers and they were a little crazy, but it turns out there's a, no, there's a game. Um, yeah, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> was your no? So was your theme? Um, was your theme always Bigfoot, or did you have it a different theme to begin with? Or I totally did. So my original theme was alien abductions. Um, oh, okay. So the idea was like you're playing as these UFOs, you're abducting like cows and farmers and whatever, but you have to like tell them like, well, like your UFO doesn't know what a cow is, so you need to have the card like this is a cow. Let's get all the cows. Mm-hmm. And then I pitched it to the publisher, and they're like, we love the game, hate the name, hate the theme. But we love the game, and I'm like, hey, yeah. we'll take that. Uh, yeah, and I, I've, I've grown very fond of the theme and also the name. So No, that's great. And sometimes, right, like, honestly, if you want to get a game signed, sometimes you can't be too precious with it, right? You've got to be open up to suggestions. Um, if you are diehard on that specific theme, then it's like, well, maybe you need to... Uh, you know, do a different game or look for a different publisher, but yeah. Um, I think some designers can get a little too precious about their themes and Fair. it's yeah. like, um, the, the publisher wants your game to succeed as much as you do. Um, and so yeah. like, if you're not going to work as a team, they're not going to want to work with you again. Um, there's some, um, I appreciate that Eric. Um, if you, um, if you, yeah, go into self-publishing if you're if you're really going to be really precious about your game. The publisher wants the game to do well, and they're going to market it in the way that they think is best. Um, they're going to sell it. They, they, yeah, it's a business. Yeah, it is. Here it is. Go. And um, as much I as we love games, you. at the end of the day, they do have to like in order to get the next game out, uh, they need to. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I got you. You caught him. You found Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> Again, so, oh, seriously, a... <laughs> you you had me. At the name of this, but then you throw some kind of any kind of art like this in there, and, and a good catch, uh, and very cool art. I'm very mm, there's interested Nessie. in this. So yeah, and Mike is very also cool. famously mistaken for Bigfoot often, uh, well, which is yeah. weird because we live in Northern also Indiana, true. and he he Bigfoot is not known to be in this area. Um, no, so yeah, um, yeah, you've never seen me and Bigfoot in the same place. So. Also true. Someone's um, word negative there. <laughs> nice. Too many cards in there. Oh, game. that's what they're showing. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, Welcome to my yeah, score. This, this really looks great. I'm I'm super interested in this. Thank you. Uh, our family plays games recently. Um, they were talking about like uh, they were at Game Storm and they had a, was it Game Storm? Uh, they were at, they were at a convention with it and they had a great time and that was very flattering for me. Nice. Um, I really like them a lot. So that was very neat. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. All right. Well, um, we'll talk later. But if you can ship one of these to Indiana, we'd we'd love to cover this. For you. Um, I'm, no, I mean not just play. I mean, it, Mike's but not also, wrong. Actually, I'm, I'm also talking about putting out a video for this too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah I mean, come on, Mike. Uh, yeah. But, I'm way um, to put him on the spot where he's if, like, if well, you guys. I know. I did it on the spot. I'm sorry. Thing twelve, that was thing 12 is watching. This. They can contact you if they if. Correct. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll send him a thing. So. I've followed them on Twitter, so uh, they know how to reach us. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you played any of their games? <laughs> I, I don't not. know if I have, to be honest. So, I have to uh, look at their catalog. Recently, Matches came out, and I really like that g- game. Uh, Daniel, I think, is their best uh, designer. And uh, even over like myself, I think Daniel's an incredible designer, and Matches is super duper fun. Um, it recently got fulfilled, and um, I'm loving it. It's just okay. slightly too big to be considered small box, in my opinion. I mean, they've got a Cthulhu uh, so, game. How have I not 
seen that. They do. So it's like a kind of a mind game push and pull bidding game. And uh, it's very good. Like you bid like cultists and stuff in order to take cards from people. And then if you have a complete set of two cards, so like if so, I have one half of the Necronomicon. You have one half of the Necronomicon. Oh my god! And then I can put cards up to auction, and you can bid like cultists if you want to get it. But um, then I can use those as like bidding chips later. It's really good. It's like this quadruple think game. Oh my god! I'm looking at it on BGG. I am immediately obsessed. Yeah, it's really good. I really like it. Oh my uh, gosh! And so uh, that's that's Epi's game. Uh, he's one half of, of Thing Twelve uh, of the owners, and he's also an incredible designer. Uh, he's okay. kind of held back by having to develop my games, but <laughs> I have uh, got to yeah. reach out to him about this because this sounds awesome. Yeah, matches matches and uh, seals are very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Dang it! Just when I think I've got enough games. And then I see, ooh, we're like, oh, look at this. Yeah, look at this. they're good. They're really good. They also have, like, uh, all of their games have, like, Easter eggs and stuff. So, like, uh, it has, like, the thing where you, like, lift up something underneath the box and you see, like, a little extra. You're like, yeah. oh, a couple extra cards. And it, like, some they have, like, some cross-promotion between their games. Like, you might get a card from, from one game. So, like, matches, uh, there's cards inside that you can put into Seals of Cthulhu. Oh, um, which nice. I think is really neat. Nice. Yeah, I'm really I excited to see what stuff. they do with my game. <laughs> love that stuff. Oh, yeah, man, me okay. too. Looking at matches now. I'm just like harding and subscribing to these games. I already did it for Bigfoot. Now I'm looking at their other ones. Wow. Right on. Right. On. I feel like this. I sometimes I get, um, I get like, I feel bad. Like, Oh, how did I not know about this publisher? But then at the same time, it's like, you know what? No, that's the joy of, dis of discovery. Right. Like, I, yeah. um, just talking about oh. that um, uh, before the show, too. Even just like all the games that you, you know you want to play, you just haven't got the opportunity. It just it just happens. There are so many good games out there. It's a it's a good problem to have. Yeah, and there's also like the joy of you like you go to a convention and like someone's playing this game and but like you've never heard of, and they're like, Hey, I've been really enjoying this game, come sit down, come try it, and then you love it. And you're like, Oh, that's awesome. It's like nice to be introduced to games. Yeah, wonderful. It's again, it's a, a wonderful part of the hobby. The point of the hobby. Yeah. I if if I'm ever at a thing. That's not just like an enclosed game night with people that I already know. I usually try to play games with people I don't know. Like not only mm. games I don't, or people I don't know, but at least try to meet some new people and uh, just hang out and see what kind of games they like and, you know, and, and stuff like that. I love it. Yeah. Do you oh, ever got, like have like conversations with people like, oh, I, I'm, I don't love, I don't love this type of game. Oh yeah. All the time. Like uh, there'll be, there'll be games. Now I'm not big on like, crapping on games that if somebody's like oh i love this game and i'll be like oh i hate that game i won't say that i'll be like oh that's great what do you like about it <laughs> you know like yeah you know what uh, what are your what you know what are some of your other things you know like i i you know because then i will talk about what i do like about those games because i don't think totally. that there's a game that i hate every single thing about right i try to totally. skew positive naturally as just a human. Um, yeah. But then like later on when we're better friends or whatever, they might be like, Oh, so yeah, you know, we should play this. And I'll be like, okay, I'll play it. I don't I'm love a, it, but I'll happily a, play it. Yeah. I'm a big fan of like, um, like um, finding people who like, uh, like they're like, I love Uno. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm glad that you like Uno. Um, I have the, I would love to play that with you. Um, do you want to try this game that I brought with me that I think will give you like Uno vibes? Yeah. You want to just try it and then you teach them and then they're like, I like this more. And yeah. You're like, and yeah. I, 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 I got the hook. I got the hook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's sort of the point, right? Because if you go, Uno sucks, well, now you just shut it down. You know, uh, Marvel Uno is really fun. I you know what's it. funny? Uh, it might be on a list tonight. Uh, Ooh. I think that Marvel Ultimate Uno is really good. Yeah, it um, is. Uh, th think uh, the guy that designed. This is a Cthulhu, um, Sean. He loves uh, Mar uh, Marvel Uno. Nice. We played it at the last gamma that we were at together. Yeah, Andrew, except for City Builders. I love certain City Builders. Yeah, I do not like, I am not a fan of the immensely, immensely popular uh, Foundations of Rome. Um, it, I've tried it, or I haven't tried it yet. Um, sorry, <laughs> I haven't tried it yet. The fact that it's so big kind of puts me off. It seems like it's going to be like kind of a setup. And I've heard that the game is smaller than that setup warrants. And so I don't know if that Agreed. ratio is there for me. I think I've heard they're going to put out a cardboard version, which I believe it warrants because I think the mechanics are still very good. 
Uh, I just wish it was easier to acquire. So if mm. they do that, uh, I'm on board. Um, oh yeah, I think the game's great. <laughs> I really love Arcane Wonders in general. I really like what they put out. So I, I would definitely try it for sure. I might have I might have been spreading the Marvel Uno love also. Yeah, and you're welcome, um, Nick. Okay, uh, are you drinking so, anything today? I am. Drink. I got some Woodward Woodford oh, Reserve. Woodford. And you got I was getting made fun of for giant ice blocks in my drink last week. Uh so I no. my wife got no, me you these were not. these uh like whiskey stones, but they don't get they're, my drink cold. They're terrible. It was not because you had giant a giant cube of ice in your whiskey tim. It was because you had two giant cubes of ice in your whiskey tim. So the one on top is serving no purpose. Uh I don't love the color of those. Oh, the whiskey stones are bad. They they're don't green? stay cold. They're, yeah, they're a little unappetizing. I've tried them. They're not good. Oh, Eric, wonderful. That's that is a. I have yet to find anything that is quite as good as that Dragon Smoke Origins. Very good pick. Uh, I might Mr. have to. I might have Michigan to go get a, a for real ice cube, but. Um, but my wife tried, like she found these, she's like, oh, you, you want to try them? I'm like, I will 1 million percent try them. Um, worth the try. No. Worth, the worth a try. No, sorry. No, I mean, um, they're bad, right. but it was worth a they're shot. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. We got a list to get into and we did a top 10 even. Yeah. So we need to get into this thing. <laughs> it is, uh, it's going to be our top 10 small box games. Woo -woo. Definitely has nothing to do with um, John's taste in games at all or what he said published, clearly. Well, let me just say real quick, when John held up that uh, that Bigfoot box, I was like, that's too big to be a small box game. But then he said you were cutting it in half and it was going to be smaller. Yeah, it'll then be I was smaller. Like, then I was like, oh, well, that would qualify. Because if I, from what I could tell, if you cut that yeah. box size in half, it's pretty close to what I think maybe my largest game box is like on my so list. Sure. So this um, board, uh, like because it's like the prototype, it's just like a single solid. I think this mm -hmm. is probably going to fold in half, I would assume. And so that's going to save a lot of like box space and stuff. But gotcha. yeah, the box is like way oversized. Like if you like it's like I have like so much empty room in here. I have another prototype for another game in here just like hanging out. Nice. Yeah, it'll 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 go down. I don't know how much smaller, uh, but it, I know it will be smaller than this. Nice. All right, so uh, Tim, uh, we'll have you start us off, and then um, we'll circle down to John and back to me. Okay. Um, All right. So, also, Tim, I want to hear your criteria for this before you give us your number ten. Uh, it has to be in a small box. Mm. What do you consider okay. small? Uh, okay. So I used an example with Mike. Uh, if anybody has like decrypto at home or knows how big that box is, nothing on my list is bigger than the decrypto box. Mm. Um, with, so that's my example without spoiling my list and potentially stepping on Mike's. I apologize. Um, uh, but like as much as I love the game mission control, it's just like a oh, little, so it's just a little too big. I love mission control. It would be on my list. It's we nice and, and narrow. But it's a little too, a little too big. So if you could get like one size down from Mission Control, like on your, you know, your standard box. So here's the funny thing we we talked about. Mission Control was like, okay, Tim, does this make the list due to its size? I basically let off with that one. Um, yeah. It was a ten by ten. Um, uh, I think it's a. Or it's a, uh, it's, no, it's a, it's like a nine and a half by nine and a half. And so like by the time, uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, Eric, for sure. So by the time we add up that I started adding up cubic inches. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, I'm at about like 20, 21 cubic inches. Well, okay. How big is like an all play box? They're bigger, taller ones. Those are like 10 by seven by three so again about 20 cubic inches so i actually consider that sort of like a medium sized box so to be very very specific i went with everything on my list is tiny epic size or smaller so okay. <laughs> you're you are not at um actually i lied there is one slightly larger uh at the top of this list 
But everything else is tiny epic size. I didn't go anything that I thought was medium sized, like the crypto or well, Sky Team, okay, which so, I love, is not on this list. That's so this game, to me. this game I have not played yet. This game would qualify, oh. right? Yes. Party wanted would qualify. Nothing on my list is bigger than this. And also, Nix, yes, I okay. was not going <laughs> to do that much math uh, like Mike. I was giving it the I, it. I was giving it the eye test. Um, so so nothing bigger than this, but maybe one okay. or two that size. I so I have like some backups because I was like ones that are like that's on the cusp. Uh, so we'll we'll get there and I'll kind of show you some of the boxes or whatever. Well, uh, but we I have will, but I have alternates either way. We will only mildly shame you if you violate these made up rules. That I have backups. Be. I have. Backups. <laughs> it's all good. I came prepared. Um, all right. So my number 10, it's my only my number 10 because I think it's like our pre-order right now, but you can buy it. You can buy it. So it's on my list and we're talking about confusing lands from envy born games. Did you put this on your list, Mike? Yeah, it's my number 10. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hey, we just get to be faster. Let's go. Yeah, no you, doubt. You guys, you guys can team up on this. this. I love that. I get to pick something else. Go you ahead. You can pick something else. You got alternates. Uh, this this game is really straightforward uh, and really, really easy to play. You are, you're basically, you've got these cards and they're multi-use. Sorry, my prototype, the score pad doesn't fit in the box. I have a prototype that was sent to us by uh, Matt Ryan. Um but you basically have these multi-purpose cards and they give you scoring rules. Mm -hmm. And then as you play, you're like, you have to cover up at least one corner, but you can't cover up any of the scoring. And, you know, it, it goes very fast. You're only playing a couple of cards and the game's over and you're scoring. Um, it was really fun. It kind of, I mean, to be fair, like I really like what uh, Matthew Ryan is doing over at Envy Born Games. So when I saw he kind of had this coming down the pipe. I was like, dude, like anything that you're involved in, I'm already interested in. Um, and uh, it did not disappoint. It did not disappoint. Really good. Really, um, you you just have to translate the icons. Once you understand the iconography, which it's all laid out in the book, and the rule book's not huge, but once you get the iconography, like this game takes 10 minutes, if that. Ooh. It's boom, boom, boom. Yes. Um, it's really tight. And uh, yeah, really fun. Really fun. It was a no brainer for this list. I like how those cards are double sided. So it kind yeah. of doubles what you're able to look Ooh. at. Yeah. And like one side gives two... you the scoring option and then the other, sorry, Mike, go on. You, you draw two of them and you're actually going to only pick one. You're going to swap with the other person. And uh, so you're also kind of affecting what the other player is, are doing. Um, and you can only score one objective during the game having more than one costs you points. So mm -hmm. you kind of have to pick which one you think you can score the best. And it really provides very different strategies depending on which one of those scoring goals you're going after. Uh, it, it was really good. And it was like, an, it was like a guaranteed, we're going to play this like three times in a row. This is like, good. Let's just go for it. Yeah. See, that's yeah. what I love. It's like, is like, I would rather a game be almost, almost too short where you're like, let's just play it again. Cause I had a great time as opposed mm -hmm. to being too long. Right. Is it, is it Matthew's design? No, it is not his design. This is uh Zach. Eidsvug. I'm, so I okay. apologize for destroying that man's last name. I'm sure he's wonderful. Interesting. Okay. Um, Thank you. I love, I love, I love figuring out like designers and stuff. I haven't heard of this, so that looks very good. Yeah. Hey, but I would, I, love them. I would say check that out and I don't know, get gaming, but Hey, thanks for stopping by. And we are also excited to see John like all caps exclamation. Uh, point. Terrible pick Tim. I wish I would have uh, left it off my list. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Dude, uh, I no. didn't even think you would have it on your list because I wasn't sure. Uh, anyways, I should have known published. you'd have it on your list. We stick to published stuff. Nothing that's out, not out yet. We we save that for totally different lists. You can buy this right now. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's published. That's why I put it on my list. Oh, our boy Reed's in the house. What up, Reed? And uh, John, I feel bad for you because you've just been nominated for president. Wow. I A lot of pressure. Yeah, well, actually, you got my vote. You're way better than the other two options. Oh boy, 
I don't even need to know you that well. I just already know that. So I mean, you know, I'm not 800. You know, oh, that, that helps. Exactly. That helps. Um, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't, you haven't besmirched any, uh, uh, you know, major ethnic groups or lifestyle choices oh, oh, or anything oh, like that so far. You know, like. Geez. It's, it's real easy. Let me tell you. It's really yeah, I easy know. To be nice to people. Can you remember what you had for luck? Reed, um, you're Canadian. You don't get to vote. I love Reed. I just got exactly pick same thing. Reed, right? We're in the same boat. Um, all right, John. What's what's your ten? So I don't have props for all of my games. I have them for most That's of them. Right. Uh, I don't sorry, have them right. for all. I just had it. I made okay. sure to have confusing That's lands good. because it was a like you can buy it, but it's not like readily like I'm sure. gonna go right now and just pick it up off a shelf. Yeah, I was wondering like why I haven't heard of it, but that sounds really good. I'll definitely pick it up. I'm also I also am kind of talking to him about a game of mine. Um, anyway, uh, so for my uh, first one, uh, I believe the version you can get now is called Level Ten. Uh, the one I have is called Okie Doki. Uh, it is a Japanese game. Uh, it's a cooperative game. It's maybe about yo. Uh, it's just a bunch of cards. Mm. Um, in Okie Doki, the version I have, um, you are creating. Um, like an orchestra and these animals are playing these instruments and different instruments have different numbers and on your turn it's like limited communication or whatever on your turn you have like all of these cards and you're, you're going to play one of them to one of five different sections which are the five different colors so it's like i could play to purple i could play to orange i could play to green or whatever and when i play this card uh, i'm the only person until all five of those until we're done with that column i'm the only person that can play in that color mm. so um so uh, it's been a little bit since I've played it. I believe you can ask some type of questions. Like you can kind of ask like, hey, uh, there's like this weird, like you can ask this, you can ask this, you can't ask that. But it's like basically you're trying to figure out like based off what people have in their hands, what should I play? And then on the left-hand side, so at the, at the very beginning of these things, you have these zero cards that are pandas. And you must zero out one of these um, columns each time. And you can only play in escalating order. So if at some point someone does not have the cards that they can play to uh, one of the colors, so like let's say I play in green and they only have green left in their hands, or if everything is like a high number and they have lower numbers, then you lose. Um, it's really good. I believe the version um, now is called level 10. Uh, I have it as okie dokie and I love it. It's very adorable. Level 10. I'm going to have to look for that. That sounds really fun. I like those yeah, kind of games. I highly, yeah, I, I really like it. It's best at two. Um, three is all right. And then, uh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I have the, um, I have uh okie dokie, but it looks like that they rethemed it with like a video game type thing, mm. which makes sense. I love that box. That's so cool. Right. Or it looks like a game boy. That's sick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so down, so down into the, uh, yep. Right around there where your mouse is. That's the version I have or go left one. Uh, down. Nope. Oh going to show you the, uh, the nice animals the version i have oh back here yeah uh right there and the crowd goes wild oh there we go okay this is the version i have nice okay. and i really love it yeah the animals are super cute super fun mm -hmm. uh highly recommend it this looks like a game oh, my sister would oh love. tmg yeah. that's yeah why. rest in peace i love oh I love my god TMG. yeah i love tmg yeah and i was spelling it wrong that's why i couldn't find it okay Gotcha. I was, of course, going okay. I e. I don't know. I yeah, that's how you spelled it. I. I oh, it goes straight to this. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, the new version. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Weird. Who yeah. They they basically made it an alternate name and not a reimplementation. Huh. I haven't yeah. heard of Metro X, but I'll have to look oh, that up it's too. A, it's Get a roll game. and write. It's also very good. Um, or it's actually more of a flip. Yeah. Right, I think. Nice. Yeah, this looks really cool. Mike, I'm going to grab real ice right, while you do your pick. I'm going to hear your pick, and I'm going <laughs> to run and grab real ice, and then I will come back and listen to you talk to the rest. Uh, okay. Uh, we've talked about this one a few times. I actually only played it that one time, and I still need to pick it up. But uh, you learned this with me, and it's Point City. Oh, oh. man, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I liked Point Salad, but I kind of got to a certain point with that game where I felt like I shuffled just as long as I played the game. Sure. And when now, and especially when like you play with six and you use all the cards, 
you, and it only plays 10 minutes and you really have to shuffle because those cards do get sorted together. And so it's not like a quick shuffle. There's a lot of cards and you really have to get them mixed up. Um, but I thought Point Salad adds a couple extra levels that don't make it more complex, but add more replayability and just make it a better game. Hmm. Um, I really enjoyed this new version from AEG. Um, they basically add like more of an engine building element to this because hmm. it's not just grabbing cards for the points. You also maintain these resources at the bottom uh, and you're building up, uh, sorry, you're, you're using these cards to build up to these like city cards that you kind of add to your own little town. And then you're also getting these different types of scoring tokens that can change each round. Um, I just thought everything about this version was an improvement on Point Salad. Uh, and I still need to just pick this one up. I, I'm one of those, I'm like you, a good small box game is always worth the money. Yeah. You're going to get your money's worth. And when you can find these for, you know, 20, 25 bucks, it's just a no brainer. I, that's what I need to add in my miniature market cart. I've got some stuff. I'm trying to work an order up to free shipping. Yeah. And I always freeze. I'm like, what other games did I want? As soon as I find one game I want. Uh, but anyway, uh, I need to just put that one in my cart. It's really good. I have both or both on my self shelf of shame. Oh, uh, nice. I, point Salad is on my shelf of shame. Yeah, Point so. Salad's still good, but... Um, uh, but man, Point it, City, I really enjoyed quite a bit. It is better, but Salad supports six, so there is that. Um, mm. But yeah, Point City only goes up to four. I'd call it more of a 20 to 30 minute game, whereas Salad's never going to go past 10 to 15, even with six. So again, just a little bit more going on, but still very easy to learn and a better game, in my opinion. The flat out team is very, very talented for sure. Um, so there you go. That's my number ten point city. That's almost as good a pick as uh, Confusing Lands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a good bounce back. Was, yeah, uh, good, yeah, good job. Confusing uh, switching my pick there, you thief. No doubt. Um, You're welcome. So. All right, Sam, what's your number nine, and why is it on my list? Ooh, I guarantee you this one isn't on your list, because I don't think you've played it. Um, this was a game that I kind of discovered by accident uh, when we were... That's we were... Um, I know, right? Uh, okay. When we were... Our channel is much bigger now than it was uh, for a long time, and so, like, during those years where we were really trying to grind, and it's like, I'm talking, like, just a few hundred subscribers... Um, we got this game offered to us uh, called Seven Bridges. And uh, this is a roll and write. And I don't love roll and writes, but when oh. I get a good one, I'm obsessed with it. You know what I mean? Like, like, cause uh, um, welcome to Las Vegas. I'm like, well, it's fine. Uh, Mike, do you recognize the designer's name on this? Of course I do. It's Mr. Ron Halliday. Yeah. So this is how I became friends with Ron. I, we independently of knowing Ron, uh, we did a video for this game. We reviewed it and we were kind of obsessed with it. My wife really liked it. My family really enjoyed it. Uh, and we were playing the hell out of this game. And what you're trying to do is it's the seven bridges in that one city in Germany. Is it Germany? Uh, and you're, thank you. And you are trying there, the rule is like, there's this thing where you can't cross all seven bridges without doubling your path, right? Doubling back. Sure. Um, so Ron is also a cartographer, like that's his day job. And so he loves maps. So he came up with this idea based on this famous puzzle. And so you're rolling dice and it basically, you're going to choose the die. And that's like the direction that you can continue to draw your line, right? As you're mm. moving through the city. And so you're going to get by the end of the game, you're going to get points based on like walking past different landmarks. How many bridges did you cross? So you're going to add those lines. Go back one picture, Mike, where it shows the dice a little better. Oh, those were prototype dice. Let me get you. Oh, no, oh, those are good. Go. Okay. Yeah. So you see the lines like you can add those lines to your existing lines in your uh, on your map. So you're drafting the die. You're adding the lines. You're doing stuff like that until the end of the game. And then you just see how well you did like going around, you know, and you're trying, like there's different, like you get points for like parks you've walked by or monuments you've seen and, and things like that. How do you um like, so 
you said like it determines like the direction is it just um so it's not the direction it's the lot like so so you see there's like a t like yeah. die and like some of them are straight line and someone's like a half a line so like that is you're going to continue to draw on your map so if you scoot oh. over a little bit mike to the side you'll see the map now zoom back in on the map but actually be on the map um <laughs> work like work oh, okay yeah <laughs> oh, Maybe, yeah mush okay. mush <laughs> Um, so, so the white lines in between, so the red lines there are kind of showing how he's moved, you know, this person is drawing their lines through their, uh, sure. through their, their oh. tour. And then you're going to go through and basically take your best so contiguous sh- run and score that. Mm. Um, so anyways, it's a very light, easy, uh, straightforward game, really fun. Um, really like this. And, uh, and then yes, I made a I made a good friend in the game industry. He was one of the first uh, uh, designer friends that I made because he saw our video, commented, and was like, "Oh, thanks for liking my game." And I'm like, "Oh, like people now you like just talked about doing this earlier, but it's like, wow, you post a video about somebody's game and the designer will show up and comment on it. Like that's amazing to me. Now yeah. it's not as insane, but it's still a pretty good, cool feeling." Yeah, well, it's like uh, it's super surreal, like for sure. Like sometimes, yeah. like I'll watch a channel, and then like one of my games will get brought up, and I'm like, "Wow!" Ah! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Really neat, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and and Ron's a he's a great guy. He lives in Brazil. He's a Canadian that lives in Brazil, and um, he designs games down there right now. And uh, ooh, the designer of Kuhn. I don't know what Kuhn v Lakia is, but it's that's a really cool. Game. I haven't played it. it looks interesting uh david this is seven bridges strong recommend man strong recommend um anyways i really enjoy this game haven't talked about it in a while this list it was one of the first games i thought of i was like oh this is a perfect small box game uh you know it's like yay big and sure yeah where your fingers are almost touching that's that's good small box. right right for sure two player tug of war <laughs> deck building game get game and you're talking my language that sounds awesome andy has really good taste in games sweet i i would need to be friends with that person <laughs> i like that all right that's my uh that's my number nine seven bridges mm-hmm. i guess I oh real ice so much better <laughs> um so for my uh number nine i'm already cheating a little bit because it's you could you could pick either or um i'm gonna say the fox in the forest or the fox in the forest duet uh, okay. Uh, whatever mood you're in. Uh, it's very elegant trick-taking. Uh, Mike, I know that you really appreciate some elegance. I know that your favorite game is Concordia. Um, very and, true. Uh, and, uh, yeah, like, um, very clever push and pull. The, the original one, just Fox in the Forest. Um, you are trying to take tricks, but not too many. Um, or you're trying to um, not... Uh, take them at all and like it's like this weird like back and forth and um, only certain cards have powers i believe it's like all the odd cards um it's very beautiful i uh, really recommend it uh, it was in target for a while uh, along with yeah. Duet, i believe and uh, I, I love them both i i play both fairly often i I've never played play this i've never either. played it and i I've really like trick taking yeah. so duet uh is really cool there's like this little so there's like a there's like a little mini map and there's a little token on it. And then whoever wins, it goes towards that person's side. But if you go all the way off the side, then you get like penalized and stuff. Also very good. I, I really like them both. Um, it just depends on the mood that I'm in. But yeah, I, I highly recommend them for sure. And they're very beautiful. So that so like that's like that little mini board there. There's the chip in the middle. And you're trying to collect all of those red tokens. And so um, certain cards have like footprints on them. So if I play like a card with two footprints and you play a card with three footprints, um it, and you win the trick it would go five towards you so we would get to one end of the board mm. there but then if you win again then it's going to go off the board and then you're going to get penalized for it um yeah i really love uh both games both games are very clever in their own way and um yeah they're, I, I, I play them all the time and they're they're just they're very thin small yeah i, love them. I remember the box because i used to see it at target all the time yeah yeah uh, i've yeah. heard really good things about this and i um yeah, I don't know. I've never just went and bought this one. I love trick taking so much. We've, I've got we've talked about this ad nauseum. There's so many games. <laughs> so there I, know, there I know. I know. I can't keep up. But yeah, uh, I've 
got one trick taker on this list. So, um, yeah. Yeah, Diana, I got a plenty of amazing games on my shelf of shame. I mean, I know they're amazing because oh. everybody tells me they're amazing. <laughs> I just haven't played them yet. Yeah, right. Uh, no, the struggle is real. It is. Um, okay, my number nine. Um, all right, well, I kind of want an excuse to talk about this one and this publisher. So my number nine is a remake of an old Reiner Knizia game that he adapted to become a four-player game, and it's Longboard. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Uh, Longboard from 25th Century Games. Uh, so I really like Lost Cities, and I thought that to me was more of a medium-sized box. And I like this theme. I like this art a lot. And basically how Lost Cities works, in case you don't know, is you're going to start with a hand of 10 cards. you got to play your cards in ascending order. Um, but you need to get the total of those cards, which go from 2 to 10. You need the sum of them to at least equal 20 because you're going to subtract 20 from that sum no matter how many cards you play. So if you play a 2, you just lost 18 points in that column. Mm -hmm. So you better play a 2 and a 9 and a 10 so at least you'll get one point for those three cards. So obviously you want to start playing in columns that you can get the longest runs that you can. Problem is, is it doesn't always work out that way. You may have a five in your hand and you're like, dang it, I have the nine and 10. Do I want to keep trying to get the two, the three or the four? No, I'll just start with the five. And then you never draw anything to go with the nine and 10. Long board takes this concept and adds a couple things. So now there's a build area in front of you and you have to take cards from your build area and move them in front of you where they will permanently score. But now there's a mechanic where people can steal cards from your build area. And it's a super strong move where you take any sum of cards that are at least higher than the card that you're taking and you give them those cards, you take that card and immediately build it onto your boards. Mm. So you know that people are looking to steal your cards because it's the strongest action in the game. So it actually adds a really good amount of player interaction in this one that I think spruces up Lost Cities quite a bit. Mm. Um, I'm a fan of this one. It's, um, it's light. It's got a little bit of randomness. Um, but it's got some like in-game scoring that you're competing for. And again, if you're if you don't have at least what they do in this one to force you to commit to a board is if you don't have at least uh, four cards in that board, you'll lose points for that board. So it does force you to commit to a column once you start it. Um, I will tell you, I, I think this game is great. Um, it's uh, Man, it's only ranked to 6.6, .6, but I think it's kind of crazy. I, I think it's a really fun filler. And I want to say that if Wine Cellar had been published, I would have put this one at number nine instead. But it is not, so I picked a different 25th century game. On Sunday, Tim will know what I'm talking about because we're going to play Wine Cellar. Oh, I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait to play Wine so, Cellar. So, you know, I get to play all of Andrew's games, obviously, and Wine Cellar is really good. I got to play very early yes. versions. and I think um, it's great. Yeah, it um, is really good. We, uh, we're going to be putting out some content for it. Uh, that video will probably be out in the next week or two. Oh, yeah. Um, so Tim's really excited. I, uh, I've actually been the one that's been playing it with other groups, and Tim hasn't gotten a chance yet. You and it's dog. funny. All, all my casual gamers are like, this is really good. It, it feels like for sale. It's got elements of for sale that I really like. It's so. really clever. It's very elegant. It um, is. Going to Lost City. I, so I haven't played Longboard. I've played Lost Cities, though. And I love yeah. Lost Cities. I love yes. the tension. It's great. Uh, actually, with I Found Bigfoot, I kind of wanted to introduce some of that tension, uh, probably directly nice. from um, Lost Cities. So yeah, that is on my radar. Reiner Kennedy is my personal favorite designer. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, I'm a big fan of just chasing down anything that he puts out. Uh, they're very good, very elegant and clever. I wait for review, some reviews first. <laughs> ah. Sometimes, some, there, every once in a while, there's like one game, and I'm like, I don't know if that got developed enough. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. got you. Uh, I will say, um, one that really kind of surprised me was Witchstone. 
I, I enjoyed Witchstone quite uh, a bit. I haven't, I haven't played it yet. Yeah, it looks really, really good. Solid. It feels like Reiner Knizia tried to make a Stefan Feld game and succeeded. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've heard. It's, it's good. Uh, all righty, Tim. You're number eight. All right. I'm going to apologize to everybody because number eight is on Kickstarter right now because it's a reprint. So you can find the original version, maybe, or you could just get on Kickstarter and get the reprint. We just did a video. It'll be coming out really soon for it. And I'm not doing this to be shamelessly self-promoting. Uh, but this was a game that I legit became very obsessed with very quickly. And it's called Acornism. Uh, it's by a Japanese designer that I will not mispronounce their name because they deserve better. Um, but Acornism is basically you have these domino tiles and you are trying to feed the animals and so like one half of the uh, uh, tile is an animal and the other half has like acorns on it, like a number of acorns, right? So you see the nine and the two, right? So that boar wants to eat nine acorns. So Mike, zoom out a bit, yep. please. Thank you, sir. So you see how everybody's, how they place these tiles. So somebody's going to start by placing a tile in an empty space, right? Boom, place a tile. Now, tile placement is very straightforward. You cannot have animals next to each other. You only can have acorns next to animals. Acorns can't be next to each other. Acorns have to be next to animals. Um, so when you place a tile, you, you're you placing them around other the other tiles once everybody started, right? Now, here's the thing is when you close off an animal, you enclose it completely, surround it by acorns or blank spaces. You, um, If the number of acorns that are all around it equal to the number on the animal, you get to score it. Does it have to if be exactly you, equal? It has to be exactly equal. Because if it's not exactly equal, you cannot play that tile. It's invalid. So you can block people by playing. You Because the other thing is everybody has four tiles and you play with your hands up. So... Like, so you see those four tiles lined up on either side. So you know what your opponent has. We were playing this game um, with another designer, Danielle, and she was like a total freaking shark because she looked, there was two tiles she could have placed. One of them just needed a one, uh, one, uh, one acorn, which she had. The other one needed a two acorn. Nobody else face up had a one acorn on their tile. So she's like, I'm going to score the other one because nobody's going to be able to score that one before it comes back to me and she went and boom, boom. I mean, she was really good. Uh, and then you are bordered the, uh, you can go eight by eight basically. So once you hit those parameters that, and then the game ends when you either don't have a legal play or your draw pile runs out, um, really nice, tight, very simple game. Um, the, you know, Mike and Only I talked about this dollars to back this dude. It's, it's so good. It's really so good. Mike and I love games with like really low rules overhead, but like really interesting and tough choices. And that's this game, like in a nutshell, get it? Uh, but it it's really solid. It's really fun. Um, and I've kind of just been obsessed with this. I was playing it two handed just to see how I would do like a lot, like just by myself. It's yeah. not a two, play, you know, it's not a one player game. It's a two to four player game. Um, I was out of town this weekend, so I didn't get to join them in the studio. So I did miss this one. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Bob Silver backed it. Uh, he had asked about it in our Discord. And, yeah, this game was really good. 19 bucks? Like, Dude, this is a no -brainer. This one makes my spidey senses tingle, for this, sure. It this has, was it really has, solid. Like, everything I like, for right? sure. <laughs> And the art's it, really good. The Japanese art's really designer. let's go. Yeah, it's like that. It's really cool, like kind of minimalism, but it looks really good. You know, like really solid. Uh, it's this was really a joy. Mm -hmm. This was a true joy to play. Enjoyed this oh, immensely. They even have a how to play video. Nice. Yeah, it should only be like two minutes long because it's really easy. Right, to right. Teach. Yeah. Um, cool. But but yeah, right, really tight game really good um it's technically out which is why i was able to put it on my list because this is a reprint um does it fulfill uh, but um and gonna... and for me i honestly don't know what box size it is because it was sent to me in a ziploc bag with the instructions and the tiles <laughs> in a and it was in a mailer like a bubble mailer you know because it came from <laughs> japan they're trying to save on shipping but sure Cheating. Also, don't give me any grief then. <laughs> None. None. 
I only I, give Tim grief because I always give Tim grief. Amen. It does look like a, it's going to be a pretty small box, though. It's a family tradition. It in my family, if we're not giving you grief, you should uh, be concerned because that probably means they don't like you. Sure. They pick on this you is, if they like you, right? That's our love right. language Totally, uh, is great. grief. So anyways, Acornism, number eight, strong recommend. Fantastic game. Really great good. Pick. Really nice like one. That. Yeah. No, the fact that this is live and it's a reprint, I, I like uh, that you went for this yeah. good one. That's that's totally fair game in my opinion. Yeah. See, I'm I'm, cool. I'm I'm working the line a little, but I'm yeah. I'm within the boundaries. <laughs> I mean, okay, and only twelve bucks to ship. So I mean, you're literally at thirty bucks, thirty one thirty one dollars to have yeah. this thing. I mean, yeah. At that rate, buy two, give one away. I mean, that's that's buy two, give one to a, a friend. Share the love, man. It's super cheap. All right. Um, so for my uh, number eight, uh, I really like bounced back and forth with this one a lot. It was like between three games, honestly. And I could have picked either any one of the three on any day. I'm picking the least known of the three. Ooh, I uh, like so it. it was, so this is my button shy pick. I, I could have filled up my list with button shy. Yeah. I love button shy. That's what, one of the reasons why I designed a game for them. Uh, so it was between Sprawlopolis, but everyone like of all their games, that's the one that people know. Mm -hmm. uh, Tussie Mussy, I just think is very elegant. Elizabeth Hargrave, mm -hmm. great designer. But my choice, my actual choice, is Seasons of Rice. Ooh. Uh, so this is a um, this is a game where you are um, building. Uh, it's a, it's a tile placement game. Unfortunately, got a little overshadowed by um, Sprawlopolis, but you get like uh, cards like this, and they come out in like this very interesting like um, grid or whatever. And then these different like features on here score different ways. So like, if I have this on the table and it's not closed by the end of the game, I'm going to lose points because this cow is going to wander off. Oh, nice. And then like uh, stuff like uh, farmers want like uh, uh, like bigger patties of of field to work in stuff like that. Um, very cool. Uh, and then you are drafting um, unique scoring rules for yourself um, mm. as you go. There's a, It's called a dry season and a wet season. And um, I think that this game is extremely clever. Uh, the way like it, it has like the two phases, like each season feels very different. Um, and so like, like uh, in one of the seasons, the first season, you'll pick a couple cards and some of the unused cards will go into the other season. And that's when you get to do... Um, uh yeah uh he jokes because i told you our lists are arbitrary half the time so yeah um <laughs> i i just wanted to give some love to one of the less known button shy games oh yeah so that sounds really good very cool this game is is unbelievably good and also Corey, uh the designer he wrote it as like a love letter to um uh, like when he grew up i do believe hmm. um there's also a couple expansions um there's like the ginger and something or other expansion that's really good um i highly recommend it uh, yeah, really, just really good game. Got a lot out of 18 cards for sure. And I uh, just wanted wow. to show some love to a little known button shy title, but one of my favorites. I really wow. like this box art too, or just the cover design. <laughs> yeah, the, the the rule art, <laughs> as it were. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, and um, get Damon, just so you know, I just subbed to your channel while Mike was talking. Um, so mm, I saw you got a channel. Any... I love to support other content creators. Let's go. Uh, yes, and if you didn't know, we have a channel as well. And if you're not subbed, we would like you to. Oh, yeah. Everybody should give the video a thumbs up. We're supposed to say yes, stuff like that. And that. Yeah, I think. Every once in a while, they say. Uh, and get gaming. If you ever want to cross-promote, reach out, man. We would well, love to have you on and, uh, and uh, have you as a guest. You want to do a topic crossover? Let's do it. Um, anyways, sorry, John, I didn't mean to step on. Hey, it's all good. Like this that. happened during Andrew singing. That's how I got here. It's all good. <laughs> good. Uh, yeah, get game in. I know them in person. Uh, oh, even better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's Andy and uh, Rich. Um, they're a couple, and uh, I love them both. They they uh, they gave me a lot of uh, love when I was living in California, and um, yeah, they're great. I have a I, there's I'm on a video where we talk about. Um, some some games that we enjoy stuff like that so i love it i love it i just i love finding other content creators especially like the smaller channels because yeah. it i mean nothing against any of the big established channels but like the small channels you got to do it because you're passionate you know what i mean yeah. like legitimately passionate you got to want to do it and yeah. um so yeah i'm i'm here for it i love it um 
and that's cool. I, that's really odd. I mean, here's the, the testament to their character. They, I've never seen them before. They're here because you're here. Yeah. They're here to support their friend. Like that's a beautiful thing. I think yeah. that's great. So, um, very nice. See, look, <laughs> exactly, David. Exactly. Uh, he was doing his taxes while well, yeah. talking. Yeah, I had um, some bookkeeping to do. Um, <laughs> some laundry. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, my number eight, I actually talked about this one in a recent list, but I don't care. And when you do like a list every week, you just got to mix things up sometimes. Sure. Sometimes it's just like personal hotness. It's sort of right. like, what have you played lately? And I knew I had to get one of those small all play, those small thick all play boxes in. I love and that. so I went with Dandelion. Mm, I love this game. Uh, so I actually, Wes Todd came over here about a month ago and we played this. It was okay. Well, it says right there, we played it back to back. I thought it was three times, but like I demanded we play it again. It's one of those. You play it once, you, you mm -hmm. immediately have to play it over. And the simple fact that this game is a roll and move, but it's so smart. So, mm -hmm. okay, you line these tiles out. You're going to start here at the one spot at the very first area. You're going to roll all of your dice. You're going to choose one of them, and you're going to move that many spots, and then you're going to drop the dice on that tile. So if I roll out one, two, three, four, I am stuck on this tile. I drop my four on this tile. At the end of the game, if I control that territory, the dice I have on there are going to get multiplied by the number at the bottom. Uh, and there's the alternate scoring method, uh, which I don't exactly remember, John. One of them was if you have the highest sum of dice, mm -hmm. then your sum is multiplied by the number. But if you have the most number of dice... Mm -hmm that number of dice gets multiplied by the number. There was, uh, there was two kind of catches to the scoring, and I can't remember the second one. Where. Yeah, I can't remember offhand either. I do know I love this game, and uh, but, I, I love the that, way like you can um, you can like bounce off of other things. It feels like you're kind of floating in the breeze, and like you might land and keep on going, that kind of thing. Um, oh, yes, because you can't land on somebody yeah, else. So it bounce, doubles you your again. number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you had a four and somebody was already sitting here, then you'll go four more and actually drop your die here. So there's that, there's that little mini game of looking at the dice they have available, making sure they can't get that double usage that you talked about. Uh, and then also while trying to maintain control of these tiles based on the number you have down. It's so clever, but so simple. Uh, and it's just really good. And yeah, it's one of those little all play boxes that you can get for like fifteen bucks. It's really solid. Yeah, all play is probably my favorite publisher. Nice. Uh, I, I love I love what they they put out. Nice. If I had played Big Top, which I have sitting back here, I probably would have put that on here. It's got um, it's got the Miko art in it, even, but it's an interesting kind of auction game. I just need to play it. Um, if and we had to have this discussion because if the QE box, if I didn't consider that a medium sized <laughs> box, it would be on that list. That box that is too my, long, though. That box it's, is really long. Yeah. Yes, it's 10 by 7, so it ends up being about 20 cubic inches. So, again, I, I stayed to those tiny epic sizes, but QE is my favorite all play game. I absolutely now, love that. All play used to be boardgametables.com, right? Yeah, tables. that's the best decision they made was to change their name. Yeah, uh, rebranding. Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> Good for them though, right? I mean, yeah. they because they were putting out they put out some fun games while they were board game tables, but it was just really weird. Like, why am I going to board game tables to buy board games? I should be buying a table. Uh, but no, it's awesome. They're great. Yeah. Um, and bags. Yeah, and bags. Yeah. I got one yeah, of their bags. I've met with them. I met with some employees from there and they were all super nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had like very brief encounters with them sort of at conventions. And I say them, well, it could but they're wearing all their blue, you know, yeah. all play shirts. <laughs> also, I want to give them credit since you did mention their employees. Their demo area at conventions mm. is, is second to none. Yeah. They have their almost their entire category catalog of games set up and you can have one of their employees teach you or a, at any time. I absolutely love that. 
Mm-hmm. I discovered on tour at uh, Geekway to the West. Really and good. again, I, I don't like rolling rights. So here I am playing the shit out of this game. I love on tour. It's really good. Yeah, that game rules. Really fun. Got a bunch of extra boards for it so we could play at higher player counts, you know, and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it's it's I mean, good. Mountain Goats is really good. Uh, oh my I God. Mike, too. quit talking about Sorry. small box games you oh oh me. oh all right oh particularly all I play because this is not the yeah. last time they'll come out yeah. <laughs> mike I... mike you want to just go through all the other small box <laughs> yeah, games yeah. you really oh, like yes um, <laughs> also um uh shelf of shame is ghosts of christmas i need to get that one played too. that's also played my shelf of shame i haven't played pollen or dandelion or pollen diana and reed uh, or diana yeah, saying pollen reed saying mountain yeah. goats yeah mountain goats is pretty Man, pretty good. Really good. It's pretty fun. Uh, all right, Tim, number seven. Okay, Mike, get out. Oh, Mike, did you say what you're drinking? Because if you didn't, I'm gonna say you're drinking Haterade. Because you're not gonna like my number seven at I'm all. I'm drinking water. <laughs> oh, it's Hater. It's going I'm about a good to. Point in it. Yeah, about to turn into some Haterade. Uh, oh, okay. There's something to be said for a game that is simple. You can play in a minute. And it gets the blood pumping. Uh, you, we have played two variations of this where we're either loud or we play the silent version. If people are being grumpaluficuses around us and they don't want to hear a bunch of people yelling, happy salmon, happy salmon, high five, high five, switch, switch. I love happy salmon. This is such a dumb, mindless, uh, wonderful, fun, inane game. I have mine in the neoprene fish. It is this big. Uh- I just discovered Hoppy Salmon, which adds a uh, hopping or a spin card. Did you actually? Did you actually? Hundred percent. It's arriving at my house tomorrow. I knew it. One hundred percent. I did. Because guess what? I'm gonna get that game played. Because people are gonna be like, "What's this?" I I bet it. uh, um, We were at a uh, at a small convention in Warsaw, Indiana, and like people came by with kids, and I said, "Hey, you guys want to play a game really fast?" And so I had this ring of kids and we're all playing happy salmon. And guess what? They all had a blast. Um, and that's all that matters, right? Does it spark joy? I'm not one for like cleaning out my house, <laughs> but I am one for board games that spark joy and something is inane and as silly and as fun as this. No, it's not going to make the twilight Imperium players happy, but I love playing happy salmon. That's the fish I got right there. Um, it's the best, 10 bucks I ever spent, man. I've played that game so many times. The cards are very durable, so it's hard to wear them out. And the best thing is when you're playing with like kids, you're just like, throw that card on the floor when you're done. Like when I teach them, I'm like, once somebody does that, you know, high five, they high five, you throw that card on the floor and go to your next one right away. You know, and they love that too, right? Cause they're just getting rid of them, you know? And, and it's just, it's chaos for a minute and then it's done. I just go and I clean up and then it, if they want to play again, we play again and yeah. You just play a couple times. It, the simplicity is beautiful and wonderful. This a lot is of a people game in I our cry. <laughs> uh, <this laughs> a lot of people in our gaming group really give Tim a lot of grief for this one. I don't. It, it's fine. I'll play it anytime you want. I like that it's anytime, shorter. Yeah, it's a minute. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. No, and again, this is like there's no strategy to this, you know. But it is just something. That gets people engaged. Again, if you see like a group of people getting rowdy at a table and you're like, what are they playing over there? You know, you might walk over and check it out, you know? And then again, it's like, well, it takes one minute. I can teach you the rules and we can play. We'll be done in a minute. Do you want to try it? Yeah, sure. I'll try it. You know? And it's like, I just played a game with somebody, you know? Um, So happy salmon. I have to put it on this small box list because I have played this game probably 300 times i mean that's not an exaggeration just because i when i go and we play it we don't ever just play it once we play it three or four times and then like i said if i'm at a convention and there's like i've got kids like my kids will play this you know they love playing it um so i can play with my kids or we play or you know i i love playing it with adults because i like seeing people that you don't think will be it will get into it but they get so competitive with it Mm -hmm. And it gets very intense. Uh, so I just enjoy the experience uh, that it provides. And I love my friends, even though they poo-poo this game or give me a hard time for loving it. And it's like, you know what? That's okay. Because I'm allowed to love Dune as well. 
but I also love Happy Santa. There's room for all in my yeah. <laughs> on my I shelves. Think, I, I think having like a wide variety of games is really good. Uh, mm -hmm. It is really awkward, like if someone comes over and like you only have like really dense games, and they're like, "I've what cards?" And you're like, "Oh yeah, yeah uh, I guess." We're not playing games now, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, like there's variety. cards in my terraforming Mars. Yeah, yeah. you gotta have. I, I'm I as well. I like to have a diverse collection, so there's something for everybody. Yeah, yeah, but but yeah, I fully acknowledge. Like Happy Salmon is exactly what it is, and you either love it, Hard you're slot. either here for it or you're not. You know. Yeah. Um, but I love it. I think it's a blast, and um, and also though, like depending on the setting. If it's if the setting is conducive for it, I definitely love. I'm more like that passionate gamer, you know, like where you get like the oh moments, you know. And I love yelling at the people across from me in a fun way, not like in a mean, yeah. toxic way, but be like, I can't believe you did that, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, and you know, and uh, just kind of creating that that thing. And Happy Salmon's a game where it gets your blood pumping, and now you're like, all right, now you're ready, like let's go. You're, Blood's flowing now. We're, now, we're, now we did cardio. Now we can sit down and play something. Uh, but anyways, I'll stop talking about it. But yeah, it. I talked about it. We could have played five games of Happy Salmon in the amount of time I talked about it. So, the uh, box keeps me from really wanting to own it. Uh, if you can find the neoprene fish, that's the one. Right. I, I really like like having boxes. <laughs> like, okay. Well, I you really can like be able to put stuff on my shelves and it. You can buy better. it. You can buy it now. You can't find it in the fish, so you can go to a five below and find mm -hmm. Happy Salmon, and it's in a this size, real skinny box, way too big for what it needs to be, sure. honestly. But yeah. All right. Uh, so for my uh, next pick, um, I was once again torn uh, for. I really like this um, publisher. The game I chose was a fake artist goes to New York. Oh, I suck at this game so bad. Oh, this I game love is, it. This game is cool. I'm just terrible yeah. at it. This yeah. game is very cool. Uh, so a fake artist goes to New York. Everyone gets this. Um, so I, I, I was choosing between like eight different Oink games. I really like what they do as well. Yes. Um, but a fake artist goes to New York. Uh, it has like that special zhuzh that like uh, where you where you play a game with someone and they go, oh, like this is really clever. Um, so everyone gets like a different colored pen. And uh, one person doesn't know what you're supposed to be drawing. And there's like a prompt on, on like these little cards that you have. And so you pass like this paper around and one person makes, it's like, I believe it's one line and you can't pick up your pen or whatever. And so once you do your line um, and then it passes to the next person and they go, uh, it passes around twice. And then people try to guess who doesn't know the prompt. They are the, uh, they're the fake artist. Mm -hmm. If they get it right, even if they do get it right, so like someone makes a line and you're like, that doesn't go to anything. Um, if you make the drawing too obvious, they can guess what the drawing is and they can right. still win, which is great. It's, do you want to be obtuse but not too obtuse? Yeah, it's great. Super it's like clever. Spyfall or Chameleon, but with the okay. artistic twist. Exactly. I yes. have to get this game. Or Detective Damn it, Club. John. Stop it with is... all the good picks that I need. See, to... I'm so bad at drawing that everybody always assumes that I'm the fake artist. That's what makes it fun. Uh, I'm also very bad at art. And that's I think that's literally half the fun. I like I like games where you don't have to be gifted in art, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Illustrations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Love that game. Um, yeah, I, I, I love it. Uh, it's such a good game. Uh, it has like all the tension of like... Um, of yeah like spy fall but like with, with like a little art twist and mm -hmm. uh yeah, yeah excellent fun and like like some real like good laugh Very like when cool. someone like guests guess something that's like just totally out there mm -hmm. and you're like it was not that but good try <laughs> yeah yeah that is the that is the joy in it i am just so bad <laughs> i do i i think it's awesome and i love what they've done like with it i really do um i enjoy the game i'm oh Oh, I've heard just, about this game, but wow, now I just need it. Yeah. Th like, this is, is just like, so unique. I love it. It is a game that, of like, if I could offer like 10 games to someone, like, I'd be like, here's like a well rounded, that would mm -hmm. be like one of the games because it has both nice. the art aspect and then like the social aspect. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I really like it. Nice. Very I good. also, if you, I if you haven't played similar in game style but you don't have to draw but um have you played detective club 
I haven't. I really want to. I, I that is kind of like I think that's the other thing that is that right now is like my favorite version of that kind of game. Sure. You know, where it's like everybody but one person has a piece of information, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and then you're trying to show demonstrate that you know what that information is and then you right. got it at the end guess who didn't know uh anyways i'm sorry uh mike what was your number seven and how will you oh, then incorporate one. seven other games with it um well <laughs> uh maybe a couple because there's a few versions of this um Ooh. but you know i could have picked there's a few different rolling rights i could have picked i i actually only ended up with one on this list and it's the og and i love this game and all i do is just keep the dice the pens and the paper in other boxes and take those and that's because it's dan shown clever yeah oh mr wolfgang warsh you have made some phenomenal games in your day and this is one of them it is so genius in its simplicity and similarity to yahtzee Really, um, and, that's, and that's, that's this game is my jam. I love this game. I played, I've played it on the app so much. Um, I just love the different type of combinations. You really, what makes a good roll and write, in my opinion, is combos where, like, okay, I'm gonna scratch this green, and then that gives me an extra action so then i'll go ahead and use that purple and that gives me another blue to scratch off and then oh i love stuff like that and just the different ways that you can strategize in this game um the fact that you have to take the lower dice that are available because if you take the higher ones the lower dice go away and you don't even get to use them or re-roll them for future rounds mm. um Die, I expect cartographers to get talked about. Um, <laughs> um, it is excellent as well. Uh, but all the clever games are really good, too. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I played so, the heck out of the app on this. This was like my, yes. if I was traveling, like, like like if I was in an airport, this was my go-to game. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for yes. my next flight. Um, yeah, very good game, for sure. It's very much true. I think everybody uses the app anymore. But I, I will tell you that I, I do keep, I've got like this one box that I put multiple games in and i just chalked the components and the rule books in there sure and this is just one of those games you just need the dice the paper and the pens that's mm -hmm. it um i've printed a whole bunch of extras so if i'm in places where i don't have signal which happens a lot i camp a lot i always take this game camping with me and i can always get someone to play it mm -hmm. Yeah, no, like, components that would really be, like, lost in the wind. And, like, your main component that would be is, like, your board, so you're fine. Yeah, and set your pen on it. Yeah. Yep. Love it. Oh, okay, Tim, it's time for number six. Woo! My number six. Oh, my gosh. This game is so beautiful, and it's literally just, like, a bunch of cards. Uh, have you guys heard of or played Kinfire? uh delve vainglory's grotto so kinfire mike look up kinfire um no this... i will not look up any games oh please pick. oh no uh this game has amazing art and you basically you pick one of two heroes this is more which... or less a solo game i'm sorry Vain, which vainglory's, version? vainglory's grotto g-r-t-t-o yes yeah um Whoa, you're gonna point one. Wow. you're gonna pick one of the heroes uh to play as you can play two player i've only ever played this solo and you just pick which hero otherwise uh you pick which hero and then you build this deck that you're gonna battle through till you get to the bottom uh in this particular story there is like this great darkness that has enveloped the world and it they found that the source is like emanating from this well and so you basically are traveling down to get to the bottom of this well. And then there's a monster or, a, you know, a big evil being that you're trying to, to battle. And there's these different uh, cards you need to play, different kind of requirements, you know, like you're, you're doing damage or you're going to a location and you're kind of solving a puzzle. Like, but you're not really solving a puzzle. It's more like how you play your cards. Like, can you meet these requirements mm. uh, to then move past it? And the card art is absolutely stunning. 
Um, the choices, yeah, wow. <laughs> the the choices are are brutal uh, and wonderful, and uh, it's is a very very cool game in a nice small box, um, probably about the size of cartographers. I think so, mm. um, maybe a little smaller. Uh, but man, it's this game is really good. I um, I basically they I had seen the art and stuff, and like they had asked, like they were looking for reviewers, and I was like, this looks beautiful. I would just try to play this just because of the how cool it looks. And then I played it, and I'm like, this is freaking amazing. Um, I'm hoping I asked them, I, they've got another, uh, Kinfire coming out. I'm like, Oh, please, please, please let me uh, review it. <laughs> Cause I really like the first, you know, this one so much. Um, but yeah, again, really cool art. Um, really nice. Um, like the gameplay is really unique and, uh, and really interesting. And again, really tough choices. You know, you just got a couple cards in your hand and it's like, Oh, do I do this now? Do I save this for later? And you've mm -hmm. got options. Because you're going to choose, there's different locations, basically. You can choose which one you go to. So it's not always just random top deck, I get this, right? You're like, okay. So I look at these, th you know, four things, and it's like, which one, which one can I handle right now? You know, and so you do that, and then you try to, you know, and then you, and then a new one will come out. And, and uh, yeah, but it's it's really cool, really enjoyable. Um, and just So not only... Does this game have really good art? This is designed by Kevin Wilson. Yeah, I was gonna bring that I up. Didn't oh, realize catch. that. I love Kevin Wilson. Holy cow! Uh, if you yeah, love Kevin really Wilson, good. then you'll probably already you'll probably really like this. Um, but yeah, this game was badass. I mean, that's just that's just it. Badass, cool art, cool theme. The gameplay was amazing. And I'm the kind of person that like if the theme or the art isn't great. It doesn't bother me, but when it's really good, I'm like, oh, even better, right? It's like yeah, a, just it a good se seasoning on a game. But I will definitely play an abstract game and love the hell out of it, uh, yeah. you know. But anyways, uh, very I mean, good. Dracula is one of my favorite games, so Kevin Wilson, baby. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's really good. Yeah, that looks excellent. That looks. Like have you, game. John, have you played Stuff of Legend? Uh, so no, oh. uh, I, I, they were doing uh previews for it when I was talking with them. Uh, I pitched to, um, the old studios at one of the gammas I was at awesome. and it looked really good. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff legends is, is good. We are fortunate enough to be friends with Mike Giuliano from there. And, and yeah, Googs, uh, Googs is awesome. yeah, I love Googs. He's my yeah. guy. He's my guy. I don't around a casino. <laughs> oh, I like love lost. it. Yeah. Oh, boy. He's lost in Reno and I was like, oh, this is where the front desk is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Googs is the man. Love him. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff a legend. I mean, yeah, killer designer, man. Just really good. Nice. Cool, cool. All right. Let's 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 see. I got my uh, all play choice here Ooh. now. Uh, so I went with um, one of probably their less known games. It's another trick taker. I chose Nine Lives. Okay. Um, I love this game as an intro to trick taking, um, and I think that this uh, the rule set um, is sneakily uh, like there's more to this game than it would first appear. So the way this game works is you are trying to it's like one of those like you got to predict how many you can get, um, mm. but you can actually see in people's hands. So like before you make the prediction, you could like the card backs are different colors. So if like I have a bunch of red and you have a bunch of green, I can see that from my side of the table. And then, so you have the, these little cats uh -huh. here and they lay on like this uh, board. That's like a little mat. And depending on where you, if you like, uh, if you lay it sideways, uh, like lengthwise, you're, you're bidding on like two things. So like you're saying I could win two or three tricks and you're going to get less points than if you put it like, um, where if you put it like horizontally, then it's pointing at one, you'll get way more points for that, but you obviously have a more narrow bid um, range. Mm. And uh, it's also like a, almost like pseudo area control where if I take up, if two people take up the two and threes, you cannot bid two or three anymore. Like they're fully taken, like on that board, two and three is fully taken. So two people went for one, two people went for two, three. Um, so four was still open, but like, so you can kind of like block people out as well. Like if you think that they have like some kind of hand. Um, but the interesting part is, is I believe it's whoever wins the trick, uh, the rest of the cards left over, you take one card and put it into your hand. And so a lot of the trick taking is um, not about what you play, but what you don't play. So like, um, if I give them these cards, 
then maybe they could win this other trick later on. Um, and it's also very helpful for when you're um, teaching trick taking because you can see the cards. And sometimes like people forget you must follow suit if you can, right? Oh, right. Yeah. And so like someone will like try to pull a card out and I'm like, ah, that, 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 that. It's not green. I see that. You have a green card. Got to play that one. So that's kind of like nice. It gets people into the thing. Um, I really like it as like an intro to trick taking. And yeah, it's just a really clever, neat game. Um, I, the art's a little weird, which I like. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's in that. I'm all for weird, man. Size box. I like the color use of colors on those cards. Those really mm -hmm. pop. Yeah. Now, this do you know, awesome. do, do people... Could people have uh, colorblind issues with those cards, or are they okay? I, uh, they they have like those little icons on them. Oh, perfect. And then there's like, and then the backs, I, I believe, oh, have like yeah. different textures. So like, one's like lattice, and then the other got one's, like, it. You know, perfect. Like that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Our, we have a we have a friend in our game group that is that has no co green. Some color colorblind issues and stuff. So I I was not even aware of it until we started board gaming together. Uh, we had been role playing game friends for ages, but nothing's color dependent in role-playing games right. so it never mattered and then yeah. it was like what do you mean you can't tell you know and then it's like oh my god i never even knew you were colorblind and we've been friends for 12 years yeah that is a big thing you got to do when you're designing is like yeah. keep color blindness in mind yeah and that's and this, wonderful that more people are aware of that but yeah. yeah and this has no green that would like get mixed up with red or anything it's just got mm -hmm. like that sort of uh, almost kind of pinkish red and then mm -hmm. purple to go with blue i know where so yeah, yeah this looks great yeah very very good game um super nice. fun uh i normally don't like the predicting style games uh but i find because i can kind of look at people's hands i can get like a better grasp on um, <laughs> oh, sure. uh okay all right all right well um i got a game that's kind of like predicting here you're sort of guessing the draw in a sense and one of my favorite small box push your luck games tim we haven't played this in a while but I played it on BGA. I'm like, man, bag of chips is so oh. fun. <laughs> bag of chips is great. And it comes in that actual mm. crinkly bag. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. It, you know what's funny is that we actually have this one friend. I am so willing to do anything to make my collection and my home when I house games be inviting to people. We have this one friend that hates the crinkling. <laughs> so I actually took it out of that bag and put it in a different one um sure. so bag of chips um this is such a clever little game so you're basically going to start with a hand of five cards and you they're gonna drop five diff five right. chips on that very first scoring card i'm trying to find that card layout there we go uh oh that's a prototype no that's it it's wow that's a different version it's weird Oh, well, this is a better view. Mm. Throw five chips on mm. this. You're going to draw your five scoring cards. You're going to discard one. So what you're doing is you're discarding scoring cards. You're trying to figure out what different combinations of chips are actually going to be randomly drawn from a bag. And you're oh, trying to predict it. And so you may have one that says, just show us a card there, Tim, real quick. There's one. Uh, you're saying, okay, I think that the buffalo chips, there will be more of those than will be onion chips, I believe is the yellows. I, so, I, after you draw I think the onion, all are, the chips. Yeah, go on. Yeah, After you draw all of the chips required for all of these cards, you're going to draw five, and then four, and then three, and then finally two, you're going to add up your scoring cards. But one card at the very end, you actually end up keeping three total cards. So you drop chips down on the first card, you discard a scoring card. You drop the four chips on the second card, you discard a scoring card. On the very third card, you're now going to pick, all right, out of the three cards I have, two of these are going to count for my score. And one of them is going mm. to be guaranteed to count against my score. And that's that orange slash red number at the top. So, yeah, you can try to be ballsy and go for these times 15s or go for these 80s or these 90s. But what I do is I keep a two because that's the lowest negative that you can get. 
So if I get that 200 and I miss it, <laughs> yeah, that's not very good. So it's totally guessing randomness from a bag. And yet when the exact chip gets drawn that you need, you're like, yes! I this love game moments has like that. Celebratory mm. moments because one of the scoring cards, it's my favorite one. It's my favorite one when I'm like, I really don't like the cards I have available. So let me try the one that you are literally guessing what the last chip pulled is. And Ooh. only if that style of chip is pulled, does that card score. And when it does, you're like, yes, it's, it's just so fun. It, it's, it's a ruckus time. It plays really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, it's push your luck. And it's mm -hmm. yeah, just guessing probabilities and it couldn't be more fun. Any game with like any type of shoot the moon thing, so clever. I love yeah, it. it's so fun. yeah, it's really good. It's really yeah, when fun. You, when you guess that last chip right, it just feels awesome. It's a really fun. You've game. done it. Uh, I have. Yes, it, it's it's it is possible, but it's tough. <laughs> it's it's very rare does it happen. Uh, but and it's not necessarily a guess it's you drew the card that said okay you'll score if the last chip drawn is a blue chip and then oh there's the blue chip i needed you know so and you could also you know there's probability you can take it right because there's you know there's x amount of each kind of chip so if i've already seen a bunch of these chips drawn you know well this one hasn't come out yet like in all likelihood there's still a bunch of that color in the bag yes. so it should come out soon um, so, I mean, there's a little bit of game to game, but, uh, it, I don't like solvable games. So bag of chips is like perfect for me because it's really, there's some luck there. Um, with I'm it. in the same boat. Um, yeah. You can, you can kind of suss out a little bit of what could happen, but I mean, it, it yeah, yeah. And, right. Yeah. I don't want, uh, because people that are smarter than me, which is everybody that I sit at a table with will automatically just beat me at a game if it's solvable like there's always yeah. you know it's like okay fine like if i wanted that i would play chess yeah, uh, yeah. you know there's yeah definitely guessing and some probabilities uh, Love it. all right the, tim number five all right we mentioned my number five earlier but it was not stepped on by anybody at least not intentionally uh but it, this is a legit really fun good game and i love it because it's an awesome gateway game uno ultimate marvel i don't have the dc one yet but i got all the character decks for the marvel one mm. um this game's really solid it's uno but the way that you can attack your opponent's decks and like drill their deck down you know to try to get them to lose so you're not just trying to clear your hand out you know what i mean like the alternate win conditions the asymmetric players you know, play styles because everybody's got their own deck uh, and their own nemesis, you know, and right. like things like that. Just really cool or really fun twist. And I just hate that people will dismiss this because it says Uno on the box and mm -hmm. people will. And it's like, don't sleep on this because they could have not called it Uno. They could have just called it like Marvel Ultimate and people would have been like, oh, this game's really cool. Uh, and probably more people would give it a shot. But also at the same time, I think people that are walking down like Target or Barnes and Noble will see Uno and it's like a Marvel theme. M more people might give it a shot because of that. So I think yeah. in the community, it gets a little bit like passed by where I think it's a really amazing opportunity to to swing that gate open, kick the gatekeepers out, you know what I mean? And go, hey man, like, look, like you said, you got somebody you meet and they're like, oh, I like Uno. And you're like, oh, well, you like Uno. Let's play this. And then if they if they play that and like it, well, now you can play games with asymmetric player powers. You know what I mean? Like you can start to introduce some of that. You might even be able to get them into like a deck builder, uh, you know, just things like that. Or, or a more in-depth trick-taking game. You know, anything in that style, right? In that theme. And, uh, and yeah, it's just a wonderful opportunity to bring more people into the hobby. The game is very cool. Yeah, I think um, 
I actually think that the Uno branding in general works probably better for them overall, I would say, just not in like sure. the board game sphere, like at, like with people who really love board games. Oh, sure. I'm sure it hurts. But yeah. like uh, Marvel, uh, obviously it's Marvel, right? And like for like the general populace that doesn't have a BGG account, I think that I assume that it, it's working better for them because people know Uno and it has like that little bit of familiarity. I'm inclined to agree with that statement. I think yeah. I when I say when I say it gets passed over or or the Uno hurts it. It's more for the the niche gamer community that we are, right? Yeah. Um, versus the mass market appeal. The Uno yeah. gives it that mass market appeal. I do really love when like geek market was like flooded with these because there was just people just pulling out the foils and then they're like I'm oh. selling the copy now but they were just like trying to get all foil decks. Like, oh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and because like right now it doesn't even show any available retail. Look at it. Yeah. You can find it at places. Well, well I sure. know that I'm just saying like new. You well, know, so like in, I, I, well, because they came out with like the new starter set because this is like the original starter set, and then they came mm, out with the new mm, one uh, a little okay. bit more recently with a couple new characters or whatever. Yeah, and so yeah. Then like this one's out of print, maybe. The new starter set has the DC yeah, gotcha. characters. It's like Batman, mm. Superman, Wonder Woman, and somebody else. Mm. Uh, there's two Marvel starter sets that I'm aware of, and then I've got all of the characters that came out, the Marvel characters that came out with the initial release. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Still copies of this available at Fantasy Games. Mm. That's our local gaming store. <laughs> yeah, this game's good though. And what's fun is I got exposed to this because our local game store where we film our studio show at, um, he, uh, the owner of that store was like, hey, um, they, you know, they we're going to do like a Uno event. And he's like, I was kind of hoping that maybe you and some of the rundown guys would want to like, help teach uno i was like dude i'll do it my daughter loves uno she's 12 she loves uno um so we get we got it she learned it you know and then so me and her spent like a whole saturday at the game store just teaching people uno you know marvel uno and uh people are having a great time my daughter was having so much fun uh because she got to be the 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 teacher of the game yeah. Like she was teaching strangers, you know, like it's stuff and just having a really good time. And like, I felt so proud, like just watching her, you know, like just shine, you know, uh, and, and really enjoying it. And then, but people were sitting down, people I didn't know, like tons of people I did not know came out just because there was this event um, that I've never seen before, haven't seen since, but they all seemed like they had a good time, you know? And uh, yeah, I, it was very cool. Very yeah, cool. That's what it's all about. For sure, man. All right. I'm going to continue down my path of small card games. Yeah. Um, more like, so this I think is like a modern classic, I would call it. Uh, it's one of the games, it's, a few games give me creator envy, but this is one of them. Uh, it is Scout. Uh, I'm sure uh, you've heard it's of on, it. It's a my alternative. Yeah, I love Scout uh, so much. Uh, such a clever game. Uh, you get some cards, you can't rearrange them. You're trying to make runs out of the cards in your hand. If you can't uh, beat a run that's been previously played, you can grab some cards from, from a previously played run, but then they get some points. Just super duper clever. It's another oink game, uh, but uh, I think it deserves all the success that it's uh, seen and why it's like a con favorite. Uh, yeah, just just elegant, clever. Um, yeah, just it just feels like mm, classic. It's uh, yeah. It's so good. I just have one negative thing to say about Scout. Mm. I loathe, loathe the pasted on theme with this one. I would almost rather have the Japanese no theme version where it's just basic cards. Um, but uh, um, but the uh, the theme feels forced. Uh, like just don't have a oh, theme. Oh yeah. Um. I so there's like a confetti version that's like a. Um... That was like the themeless one. That was the first one I played, actually. Mm. Um, but this so game is, I'm, this game is amazing. I'm it sorry. It is amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, the theme, the theme. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything for me. Like, ah, yeah, it's like, yeah. It's like you're you're scouting talent sense. I'm like, mm, sure, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't insult my intelligence. I think yeah. that's why I hate it so much. Is it's like I'm offended that they're even trying to convince me that this is a theme. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think like going like maybe just like an Uno style like themeless. Um, maybe. But it's a great a, game. It is. It is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another Japanese designer. Uh, so, really 
they're making this new version here. This is it here that can be found at Target. So they've made it into big box. It is cards only. So your actual tokens now are just cards for Extra cards. your mm. yeah. Wink yeah, has been so, in Target before, I believe, but I'm excited nice. that Scout's going to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so this is actually the packaging and everything. Uh, and this is a phenomenal pick because this is also my number five. Oh, Get snap. stuck on all day, bud. I, That's what yeah. you I love this game. It's so good. I, I love how you can flip your cards. You can play either side of your hand before you actually start. Um yeah oh which one is which which one of your games is hand shedding john uh, well it's signed uh it's gonna be with thing 12 uh i don't know how much but we can talk about that later all right okay. fair enough okay. man get gaming has got all the scoops yeah definitely <laughs> yeah, like they've played a lot shedding. of my games for sure that's awesome very cool yeah great pick this game's awesome um, yeah, I didn't really know about it until it got that reprint and then like sold out, you know, immediately. Yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't find it anywhere, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. And finally yeah, I, came uh, back. I think I bought it immediately. I heard some, uh, I, I may or may not know someone who might've like drummed up a lot of hype for it and like really pushed it and it ended up working, which was cool. So Bob, you're a goddamn liar. <laughs> you know, yeah, that, it. Game, that game does nothing for anyone. He's trolling. Bob's in our group and he's goofing with us, so. He's one of my oldest friends. Um, yeah, yeah, Bob, that was the one. I was showing the new version. So this is actually the version that's available at Target now. And instead of cardboard chits, they just have the cards for your points here. Mm. Uh, uh, so. One of the best parts I, I failed to, to mention, it was actually when you take the card, you can decide what orientation you want to put it into oh your right hand, yes really fun too yes. and also when you when you get your initial hand of cards you like flip it over and you're like oh well yeah well. such a cool <laughs> such so a neat. cool design so neat. yeah yeah very clever i do have all the scoops i keep in a box in the closet labeled board game blackmail i love it all my scoops are in my cat litter box over here <laughs> they're uh, not near I'm as not, they're not near as good i'm not gonna change my pick it's it was a really good one uh so yeah that's my number five I, I had scout written down in case we got within the top five and nobody had said it but i the likelihood of that happening was not gonna happen yeah right? like good, scouts yeah. too freaking good yeah uh, good. to not be mentioned there's there's like people who try to like hate on games because they get popular oh, um, good out get over yourself right yeah, like, come on like, man uh, like Scout is one of those ones where it's like, ah, I think you really like got to go out of your way to dislike it. There's like a lot to love about the game. Yeah, for sure. Indeed. For sure. All right, Mike, you ready for my number four? I am. Okay. Uh, I finally got a trick taker on here. I don't think I've had a trick taker yet, right? I don't I've think had I have. Enough for us both. Yeah, oh, fair. I know what it is already. Yeah. I got you. I don't think you do. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Have you guys played Potato Man? No, I want to. Yeah. <laughs> Potato Man. Is that what you were going to guess, Mike? No, but I you played this guess, with you in studio. You were going to guess Scheming and Skull King, weren't you? Of course. Yeah. Anyways, Grandpa Bex, any of their games all qualify as small box games. And they are, uh, it's a lovely game company. I enjoy Grandpa Bex games quite a bit, but no, I'm going to talk about Why? Potato Man. Uh, right here, the funky, weird, like late seventies potato man art. I just yeah. love it. It's so, it is it's, really cool. it's so my jam. <laughs> uh, and this game is really kind of fun because, um, there's like the evil fry Lord is like the, his suit is like the highest suit and the potato man suit is like the lowest suit, but like a, like a potato man, one or two will always trump like a 13 or 14, which is the mm. evil fry. And then you are uh, the different Mike. I'm trying to remember how the scoring works. Cause the scoring changes each round, like different trick, different, yeah. um, different suits are worth different points each round. Uh, anyways, this game is really nice twist on trick taking games. It's very simple. It's very straightforward, but just like, you know, just like a nice little twist and some goofy art. And um, I, this game's really good. It's really fun. 
and have uh, a fun twist. I'm not able to help you with how that scoring worked, though. I mean, it's like over there, but I'm not going to go get it right now. Uh, so there's one comment I had to make about this one, and I, and I do want to just make the suggestion is that when you when you make a trick taking game and you have to fan your cards, oh. when the numbers are that big, you have to fan your cards really wide when mm. you have a big hand. That was the only thing I didn't like was the numbers were just far too big. How many cards do you start with? You like start 10. with ten. Yeah, you start with a pretty solid hand. Yeah. Yeah, and you're like, and they're just like when you got several double digit number cards in your hand you're just fanning them so wide it's like i feel like i got one of those big like yeah anyway yeah Took mike for a, for a mike for a big guy has very very tiny actually, doll hands yeah, uh so it's very hard for him to fan out those cards <laughs> I just pick mm. up. <laughs> uh but no i mean honestly if actually that was true. your if, if that was your biggest gripe of the game no, like that's really just not a, that bad a comment if you're going to make a trick taking game the numbers are the most important part of the card oh so yeah i just think that's worth mentioning and mm. bobby's right yeah this was the only trick taker you played where you have to not follow suit that was That's the other fun thing. So you have to throw off, like you cannot play the same type. Um, yeah, really fun, really cool, unique. And um, just that funky, I love that funky, weird art. Like I really do. It's really bizarre. Um, but yeah, it hits a sweet a spot for me. Unique trick-taking game. It was mm -hmm. fun. I love it. I love trick-taking. I got to try that for sure. Yeah. Potato man be worth your time. All right. Uh, my next one. Uh, I actually, so I did a 10 by 10 challenge with a friend uh, once. And this was on there and I would, I still will happily play this game anytime. Uh, this is Ohanami. Uh, Ohanami is a game from Pandasaurus. Oh, okay. Uh, it is a game where every card is unique. It goes from one to 120. Uh, it's just two decks of cards. And um, you are, taking these cards and you're putting them into columns and oh god i love this game uh <laughs> when you when you put these cards into columns uh you can either go up or down from where you are um it's just like a simple like draft drafting you draft two and then you pass the rest on and you can decide to put them in your columns or not the reason why you wouldn't is you can't put any numbers in between so like that person cannot put anywhere from 28 through 31 in that column because mm. they're, they're they're locked out of that column entirely. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like the pseudo push your luck thing of like, well, I have these two cards here. If I put them down, then like I, I'm going to get more scoring now, but I might end up hurting myself for scoring later. And so like this person has like built up one single really long um, column and each uh, color scores differently. So like um, I think it's uh Green scores in the first season. Green blue scores in the second season. Green blue gray and uh, scores at the in the third season, which is like there's like three rounds in the game. And then your pinks at the end, you get like a cumulative bon bonus for. So it's like one is worth one, two is worth three, three is worth six, that kind of thing. And so like you're trying to get these cards, and there's like that like that extreme tension of like do I put these out or not? And there's also like that when card you pass cards to the next player. You're like, hopefully, I will see these cards again. Like, I hope that they don't take these two from my mm -hmm. from my thing here. Mm -hmm. uh, really clever, really elegant. Uh, just love this game. I'm happy to play it anytime. Looks cool. Looks really Sounds cool. I love great. the art design on that too. They look yeah. It's very beautiful. It is a very mm -hmm. beautiful game. Every game you've mentioned has this like clever hook that intrigues me, and that whole idea of like if I have. If I have like in this run 80 through 93 down, that means I can't play 81 through 92 anywhere in that in Correct. that column there. It, that's it kind that's of a reminds, really cool catch. Kind of reminds me of the game, the Wolfgang yeah, Wars the game. Just a little bit. Yeah. But not, not I like that game too. So I mean some that I know that's a kind of a love it or hate it kind of game, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I like it because I like this one a little more. I I would say, um, I just it's like the simpler drafting and whatever. Sure. Yeah, I knew I'd get you, Mike. Um, I know that you like like elegant games and you like like not a lot of rules overhead, but there's like that extra like layer of like mm -hmm. that. Well, what do these rules mean? So I'm I'm glad I'm getting you with my picks. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. Anachrony is also one of my favorite games. It's just sure. that to to get me 
to really buy into like a heavy game, it's really got to be good because yeah. of the cost, Me too. the time, the time sink. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm with you there. It's got to be worth the investment. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds great. This one's really cool. That art's pretty cool too. All right, Mike. Nice. Okay, my number four. Uh, starting to get pretty serious. Um, I got some backups, but these are just like go-to games. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of just expect that maybe Tim's leaving this off his list, but Marvel Remix. I Marvel this Remix. is a backup because if somebody didn't talk about it, I was going to talk yeah. about it. I freaking so, love this game. This is basically a remake of Fantasy Realm. It is and, 1 million percent a remake of Fantasy Realms. And Fantasy Realms is a really, really good game, but just every version of the box and the art, I've never thought did the game justice. And I get it. You're building like this realm and there's kings and there's candles and there's monsters. And, you know, but the box art never really helped this game out. Did you say there's so kings said, and candles? There's yeah, there's candles and queens and what's a, a can candle? Ca there's a candle card right there. What? Right there. There's a candle card in fantasy yeah. realms. A candle? In fantasy realms. Yeah. Like in you light a realms. candle with a wick. Yeah. yeah, right there. There's a there's candle one. card. Right there. I see a guy. I don't see you gotta that. Look, you gotta look. You gotta. Oh, look it's the... under the thing. I'm like, yeah, it's on my right phone. Here. I have a really hard time. Right here. Oh, yeah, gosh. I guess uh, I guess candle wouldn't have been my go-to when I'm talking about fantasy well, stuff. I would have been like okay, kings and either, wizards. But I, I was like I candles, queens, and weird monsters, pick. and I just read one of the cards. <laughs> I just I'm I sorry. I so the book of changes. All right, <laughs> just yes. so confused um, by candle. <laughs> and, and so yeah, a uh, very good game. Uh, but then they're like, let's put a Marvel theme on it and give it much better art and give it much better card quality and simplify some of the rules, make the wilds a little, just get rid of the wilds, which I thought kind of sometimes overcomplicated things. Um, and Marvel Remix nails it. It's it's incredibly good. It's always one of those games that when you're done playing, you immediately want to play again. It's just that good. Um I remember when we first talked about this uh, in our Gen Con 2022 lead up video. And I had no idea that this was, uh, I had no idea that this was like a remake of, of, of Fancy Realms. There was like no lead up or press or hype for this game at all. It just showed up. And it's, it's so good. It's so good. And no, Tim, I don't have your copy. I've lost my copy and I'm so sad. <laughs> I am still yeah. need to. I think it got left at a. I think it got left at Gen Con last year somewhere. I'm so sad. I need to just it, pull the trigger and buy this game again because um, I love it. It's so easy to teach. I mean, literally, you just give people a hand of cards and go, okay, look for the best synergies. And then you just start reading the cards and go, oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. So you're I gonna need to score find the... some of those symbols. Okay. Well, we'll do. again, uh, John, it's a hand shedding game, right? Love that. You are going to score the cards that are left in your hand at the end of the game. Mm. You know, well, so you're gonna you're not shedding. Yeah, you, you don't sure want to get are. rid of your cards. You've got to you put a card, to... you put a card down in front of you. You always are discarding a card. Yes, but you're replacing a card. You're not getting rid of cards. Yeah, I guess I feel like that you're That's still not getting shedding, rid of cards. But you're Scout sculpting is... a hand. Yes, yes, you're sculpting a hand. Thank you, John. Like compared to Scout, where you're actively trying to win hands and get rid of those so, cards out of your hand. So, Mike, what? Sorry, one Mike last Scout. question. One last yes. question, though, for you. Thank do you, you think, Bob. Do you think um, <laughs> Marvel Remix can hold a candle to Fantasy Realms? See what I did there. I have no idea what you're talking about. Never mind. Hold I a candle. Do. I'm just, hey, you oh. didn't get why I said candle in the first place, so I'm not going to pretend to get your I'm, joke. I'm watching on an iPhone. I'm filming on an iPhone. I can't see the stuff that's know, hidden beneath the layer. <laughs> and I'm also it was blind. really funny. It was like very clearly a candle, and you're like, "What are you talking? Candle? I'm like, what are you talking are you about? I'm... Candle? Like, what is English? What is candle? <laughs> yeah, like." <laughs> How is candle? You know, yeah. like who who is candle? Tim, who is candle? One person Why is candle? come out king in this battle of uh, Marvel remix and fantasy mm. realm plots? 
Listen, Mike, that's all an right. amazing pick. I love it. <laughs> we all love this game. It's it's fantastic. We really I do. I haven't played it. It's on my list to play, but oh, so are like 800 other games, you know. Yeah, no Fantasy doubt. Realms is a must play or Marvel Remix. Whatever you can get your hand on, you won't be disappointed. No doubt. No doubt. Oh, man, we're getting down to it now. We're in the top three. Mm, these are real good games. Yeah. All of them have been really good games, but extra, extra good. Mike, Indeed. I'm going to step on one that might be on your list, but you haven't said it yet. Do it. I am going to apologize. I'm going to apologize right now because I know you love this game, but I also love this game. And this game just got bumped up even higher in my esteem because I was playing it with my family in Kentucky uh, like two weekends ago. Uh, And they like kind of mass market casual board gamers, but they're down to try games. And I was like, oh, have you guys played cockroach poker? Oh, yeah. And they're like, what's that? I thought... I taught my cousins cockroach poker and then my daughter, my 12 year old's like, can I play the next round? I'm like, Oh, do you, do you want? And she's like, I was listening and watched you guys play. Like I, I want to play. And my daughter played it. She's a stone cold liar in this game. She's so good. Uh, but yeah, yeah cockroach. There's, there's nothing better than when kids bluff their parents. I oh love my it. gosh. I love it. <laughs> um, I was very late to the party on cockroach poker. Um, I uh, okay. I've mentioned his name many times, but this is apropos. Eric Lang. I was interviewing him, and I was like, "What are some of your favorite games?" And he's like, "Cockroach Poker." I'm obsessed mm. with it. He one of his favorite mm. games is Cockroach Poker. I'm like, I got to get my hands on a copy of this game. And then at the time, it was out of print. You couldn't get your hands on a copy of it. And then it went on. It, it got a reprint real quick. I scooped up a copy right away. And then I probably sat on it for a month before I got it played. And now that I've got it played, it is in my go. It is in my game bag, no matter what, because the box is, you know, tiny. I bought uh, the European size sleeve, so I sleeve my deck, you know, oh, really? because we, okay. yeah, like in the nice tight fit sleeves, because it gets played so much, and you really like are handling those cards, you know. Yeah, and that is I fair. just like you could see a card that like has like a chip, and you're like, I know that's a toad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I want that. I really want that you know, that game to last. And, but yeah, we were playing it. My cousin, she bought a copy like online when, after we played it probably for the fifth time, um, you know, in a row. And I was, and then, you know, like I said, my daughter sat down and she wanted to play it and she's asked me to play it again. So yeah, can we play cockroach poker again? I'm like, yeah, we'll play cockroach poker. Like I just love it. And for a, a small box game, low price point, you know, low rules overhead, but these social interaction. And here's the thing is like, I was playing with my cousin and like her kids and I haven't seen her kids since they were like tiny. And now they're basically in their early twenties. And, uh, so I don't really know them. Like I know them like Facebook know them like, Hey, I see pictures of them growing up. So I'm sitting here like across from family and just lying my ass off. Right. You know, just like just going or telling the truth. And they think I'm lying. You know, because you just, because the way that you play the game and everybody was just so into it, right? Everybody was animated. Everybody was, nobody was like, this is dumb. Like, what is this? Like everybody was in, um, it was just the best time. So what an amazing experience, you know, for such a simple, straightforward game, uh, loved it very much. Uh, so cockroach poker, Mike, I apologize if it was going to be on your list. Uh, cause we have personally together played the hell out of this game. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just, it has to be on my list. It's so good. She's like cheating moth instead. A lot of, a lot of the games in the line are very good. Cheating moth is really fun. Too. Yeah. I haven't played any of the other ones, but oh, yeah. Yeah. Cheating I, moth is awesome. Like you're just like, get rid of your cards. However you can literally like th- throw it. Like it's fine. As long as no one sees it, you're chilling. So yeah. Yeah. See. And again, because cockroach poker is so good any of the games in that line are uh, blind buys right because yeah. it's like until i hit a clunker uh you know it, it's gonna be they're all just gonna be blind buys mm. there's I our do like this one quite a bit it's not for me uh it's not for me a, a top 10 but to oh, okay. get me to play it moving forward you will have to refer to it as cocker lock and poker yeah because that's well, the con- german version 
Yeah, yeah. Be careful with Bob when you say cocker locking because he's thinking of something else. But yeah, it's cockroach poker, super fun, really good. It is. I thought you liked it more, Mike, but I love it. I do. It's just not a top ten for me. Fair. Totally fair. Oh, all right. So I'm getting into my ones where I was like, well, so I need you. I need your guys's input on this one. Ooh. Is this box too big? So this is Rome. No. No, I don't think so. All right, then we're choosing Rome. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, Rome is from Red Raven Games. Um, it is an incredible game. So it's Ryan Lockett, so it's it got to be incredible. Lockett. It is Ryan Lockett. Um, so the way this game works is you basically get like a starting tableau of characters here, and you're going to be unlocking them more as you play. Uh, these characters, they were going to put like shapes out into, like, into this center area here, and you're trying to get area control on these cards and um when you do a character's action they like flip over they like basically tap and they can't be used until you like reset your hand mm -hmm. but at some point um once a card is filled you basically just do area control and then whoever wins the card um gets that card into their tableau and now you've unlocked a new character that lets you put more shapes out and it's all relative so if i it, like if if i'm playing in front of you if i'm playing straight here you'd be playing like straight the opposite way. So it's okay. all like, um, it like, so you want to sit in the four cardinal positions if you're playing four player. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's honestly an excellent game. Uh, I played it once. I crushed at it. Love that. Uh, there's these little tokens for the yellow player and they look like pads of butter. And so oh, that's nice. really cool. Uh, yeah, I, I, I genuinely love this game. Uh, this was, this was a gift for a uh, birthday after I'd played it at a friend's house. And uh, oh, wonderful. amazing. Yeah, amazing, amazing game. Wonderful. Yeah, well, you had me at Red Raven, honestly. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know the production quality is going to be great, and the game is yeah. probably pretty damn good, too. Thank you, yeah. Nick. You're right. Statler and Waldorf, <laughs> my favorite Muppets. Yeah, Chris uh, is our resident curmudgeon. He's actually a very sweet guy, so don't be fooled by the snarky comments. And of course, uh, the art's amazing on this because oh, again, yeah. it's Ryan Lockett. Ryan Lockett. Seriously, yeah. um, I so Danny Devine lives near me, and he oh. is also an artist slash designer. And the fact that they get to do both, like yeah. really, like I, I'm like good for you guys, but I'm really jealous of you. Guys. I wish, I wish, <laughs> I just had like a thimble full of their talent, right? Their yeah. ability to do both. Oh my gosh, I'm so and envious. If, like, if like a if like a publisher likes the art too and they're willing to take it, then it like saves them a lot of money. So it's like just that one extra step where they're like, ah, oh, we're gonna we're gonna sign that much easier. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm very jealous of the the designers that get to do both. And it gives you freedom to self publish too, right? Because now you don't have to pay an artist; you're paying yourself for that work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's Red Raven, basically. Yeah, so cool. And great games, uh, Mike. Number three. All right. We're on to my favorite trick-taking game. There's two of these. I love them both, and it's oh, yeah. the crew. Oh, yeah. I should know. I just the, – the whole concept of we are cooperatively working together to get one person to take a trick with a specific <laughs> card in it <laughs> and the – mental gymnastics that you have to do to get that to happen i just love so much um okay so our our captain needs to get the trick that has the orange seven in it um so how are we going to do that if you are holding the eight <laughs> the the orange eight well you're going to have to find a way to Throw that eight off, and, and that way that the captain can win the trick that has that orange eight in it. I just love this game, and, and anybody that has played like euchre or spades, I can get. I, I've gotten so many like casual gamers into this game and just loving it. And then like after each hand going, okay, or well, remember when you played the eight, if you would have played, if you would have thrown off on that hand, I just love the table talk that happens between the rounds on this game. I love how it gives you that limited communication token where you can say, Hey, this is the only card I have left of this suit, or this is the highest card I have left of this suit. 
everything about this game just works so amazingly well for me. I, it's it's my favorite Trick Taker by a lot, really. What was the difference between Deep Sea and then that the Space One? I had the Space One for a little bit. Sure. So the Deep Sea one, the missions that you have to complete are a bit more nuanced. Um, and that's really the only difference. I want to find one of them. Here we go. So here's here's a good example. Um, you have to win. Ooh, yeah, that's in a different language. So <laughs> doesn't help. Um, but like you have these specific missions that'll say something like, um, okay, you have to get a, you have to win a trick that has uh, one of every suit. Mm. So you have to win four tricks and, and you have to win one that has each suit in it. I, mm. I, that's kind of an idea of what these quests are. Sometimes you'll get ones where, uh, you know, where you have to, um, you have to get somebody to take tricks. I wish I could find more of these. They really don't have them anywhere on here. I've got the game hiding somewhere. There we hey. go. I will win fewer tricks than anyone else, or I'll win exactly two tricks in a row. So very much more specific than win the trick that has the red eight in it, or win the trick that has the blue four in it. Mm -hmm. Much more specific about how you have to win. And so again, the, the things you have to do to make that happen uh, a, a bit more a bit more specific and, and just test you at another level than what um, the Planet Nine version does. Mm. Um, I always like how in the very first one, or I call it the first one, but it's the the, um, the Planet Nine one. It's the first one. You, You're good. you get to <laughs> you get to I think it's level five, and that's the one here where the captain actually picks somebody that will not win tricks. I like how that can actually just be one of the mission cards that you draw. Because that was one of my favorites that, that I would also just say, all right, guys, let's play the scenario where somebody doesn't have to win any tricks. Yeah, that but it's fun. really scenario five out of a list of like 50 that are in that log book that you play that gives you added you know, variability when you play this game. Uh, it just does so many things well. For me. I know you love this game. This game never landed with me. I actually oh, liked oh. it more the second time when I played it again with you. Mike at um at that Warsaw gaming convention. But like for me, I guess there's just like a ton of other trick takers that I would rather play. Mm. Um and I also we did encounter a no win scenario and I found that incredibly frustrating. Like there was there was one right off the bat, it flipped, we had our cards and we could not win. And it's like, well, like just based off your initial hand, you're like, there's, it's literally impossible for us. Correct. To win. Correct. Interesting. Cause, cause we, we, we ended up revealing our hands and table talking it. I'm like, guys, there's no way. And we went through and again, I'm sitting at a table with people much smarter than me and we're evaluating. I found that very unsatisfying. I, I, I appreciate Mike's love. If Mike ever wants to play it, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to sit down and play it because I do like trick takers, but there were things like that that would happen that I would just be like, uh, okay. Um, and yeah, Chris is the, also not wrong. Whenever I play, it's a no win scenario. I, I played the I first played one. This. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, John. I played the first one and I was very like medium on it. I was like, this is like, this is okay. It wasn't like, uh, it didn't like light up my world or anything, but mm -hmm. I would play it. And so I wanted to see what the difference is between the first one and the second one are. The second one does sound interesting, but that can be frustrating if there's like a literally like you're like, we cannot win. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair but <laughs> thank you bobby well uh, well but here's, just, here's the thing uh, is like nicks his kids like it asked to play it so it's soft spot i mean 100 percent. if my kids if we if i somehow played this with my kids no doubt i'm buying it and i'm playing it with them um and mike one of my very good friends if mike asked me to play it Dude, I'm not going to be the party pooper. We're going to sit down and play, you know, like I'm having, and I'm not going to be there like, well, this game sucks like the whole time. Hell no. Mike, when we played it, I mean, we were all into it and having a good time. Um, mm -hmm. 
I think so, if the unwinnable scenario was in a game that took an hour to play, it might bother me. But the fact yeah. that a hand takes five minutes to play, and that's happened like maybe twice out of the, I don't know, maybe 100 hands I've played of this, it, it doesn't. So my only counter to that is, is when you play a scenario and you win, you go on to the next scenario and you're building and you're trying to see how many scenarios you can complete. So for me, yes, you're, you're right. If you're playing for an hour or more and you're like, well, this is unwinnable. That's, that is incredibly unsatisfying. But when you're trying to beat a run, I would, I want to lose because of the players, not because of the game. Does that, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, the game's going to smack you around. I love difficult co-ops. I love games like The Grizzled, which I didn't put on my list. Or I have it written down as an honorable mention. A small box game, sure. difficult co-op. Ghost Stories, damn near impossible co-op. Super fun. Uh, uh, Black Orchestra, very difficult co-op. I love Black Orchestra. So good, right? But it's yeah. very hard. Underrated. It's, it's very hard to, to win at that game. At least it has been for my group. And we're usually really good at co-ops. No, it's really hard. If you're on like hard, there's some scenarios where you're like, we just can't kill him. We just can't yeah. kill him. <laughs> yeah. But at the but uh but for me, I think for as light as it was, yes, you go you bust through some rounds very quickly, and then it's like, oh, we're doing so good. I feel so good at this game. And it's like, well, nope, now we can't win. And it's like, damn it. Um, I find that frustrating. Mike, I'm glad you love it. I will play with you whenever you want. Um in it's the number one family game on BGG. So I don't know if it necessarily needs your full endorsement. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's doing fine. <laughs> clearly. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, again, I have friends that love it and I'm glad they do. I will never be the reason that that game doesn't get played. If somebody wants to play it, I'm going to sit at that table. We're going to play it. Cause like Mike says, it doesn't take that long. Yeah. You know, I've you I played this with Patrick and your sister. Oh, they uh, love her it. Ex-boyfriend for like over an hour that one time uh, during your birthday party. It was it was a blast. We all really enjoyed it. My sister's ex-boyfriend. I think it was her. I forget it. I'm very confused. I, I don't know it? who that was then. I'm very confused now. <laughs> all right, Tim, you're number two. Did you say candle? Did you say candle? I'm very candle? confused. Candle? Yeah, it's it's written down <laughs> right here. Candle. It's in this picture. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the one thing that's showing. Uh, my number two, uh, the version I have is an Eagle Griffin game, which is really weird because normally their boxes are huge. But one of my all-time favorite games, and it just happens to be a small box game, is For Sale. Mm, good choice. Yep, yep, yep. This game Classic. is the bomb. This game is just so damn good. Um Again, yeah, thank you, can't get gaming. I honestly, they, uh, Andy and Rich, y'all need to come on this show and just roast me the whole time. Like, let's They're hang wonderful. out. Uh, let's hang out. I love your vibe. I love your style. I want to be a part of it. Um, I really do. <laughs> and they get it, right? That's the idea. Like, when you come on, you comment, give us some shit for our picks and the stupid things that we say. Uh, but anyways, I tried, but like you actually pick good games. <laughs> uh, well, fair. Except for Happy Salmon. You can kick me kick me for Happy Salmon, but I love well, it. I would anyway. try it. I can't I can't know if I wouldn't like it, but I would try it at least once. Um, yeah, Salt and Shade. I love it. I love it. Uh, but anyways, the uh, for sale, though, right? Like, it's so easy to teach. The mechanic is so straightforward. There's sort of like that press your luck of like, how much am I going to bid? How hard am I going to try for these? And then I love the timing of when you play those properties on the back half, back half of the game. You know what I mean? So you've got like these two games in one. It still plays in like 20 minutes. And it's like, boom, you fly through that first round with that auction. And then you just, the second round, it goes so fast because everybody just chooses a card and that's how much you sold the property for. Uh, just super fun. Love this game so, 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 so much. So much. Uh, play this game a ton. And uh, it's a wonderful filler game. You can play it with new people. You can play with experienced gamers. Uh, it's It just is that sweet spot for me. I play this game so many times. It's a top 10 game for me. Uh, of all time. I, I have like the little, very little box. Oh, nice. Travel yeah. edition. Yeah, I have travel edition. With the little cardboard um, gold tokens. That's the yeah. version I have as well. Um, I, 
Oh, go on. Have you, have you tried Automania or the the automobile version? Or have you tried no, the but for this? I've heard it's really good. This. I've and Mike of all people needs this because that's Mike's job. <laughs> yeah, Autorama. Thank you. Yeah, Autorama. Yep. Yeah, so it's either you get like for sale and then you get the expansion, or Autorama has it built in. I haven't tried it yet either. Uh, I wanted to see your thoughts, but I I've actually there's getting to be less and less of these online, so I've messaged this seller earlier today. Oh. oh, for <laughs> yeah, that's purple. Code. Uh, that email is already out there, so uh, well, good <laughs> it's luck. a great game. Yeah, it's a really um, good game. real quick just to reference a few things. Uh, no, we have not talked about Teach You, uh, which is a really good trick taking game, but I'm not good at it in case just anybody else was going to say something. And then Boss Monster, I enjoy Boss Monster, but it's not in my top 10. Um, I haven't played Bonds you. Monster. If you want to get on Publisher's Good Sides, a lot of them play Tichu, and I don't know what it is. Uh, oh, yeah. Tichu's a really cool Japanese, I assume Japanese, maybe it's uh, uh, Asian-themed um, trick-taking game that yeah, it's I'm really okay long. at. It's really long. It's like a, an hour game at least, which is wild. There's a yeah, really good app that will There's a really yeah. good app that will teach you how to play. It's teach, just, you, teach you? Yep, T I C H U, teach you. It was a really teach good app. Teach you. Yeah, it should be called Teach You, Teach You. Uh, but <laughs> I play the app, and I I played the app a bunch of a few years ago. I haven't played it in a while. I assume it's still active, but I have a copy. I haven't played it just because of that play time. That's real rough. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's kind of like spades, where you're playing to like a point total. Mm. And mm -hmm. you just keep going until you get to that point total. And some games are more defensive than others, and scoring's low, and it takes a lot of rounds. But so, at, as somebody that gr that is, lives and has grown up, thank you, Get Game, and it's Chinese. Thank you. I knew I was going to get that wrong. Um, as somebody that grew up in the Midwest and was sort of like that punk hipster kid, I hated euchre because everybody played euchre, and I played spades because I grew up in the bad neighborhoods. And all the poor kids played spades, and all the all the waspy kids played euchre. I was a spades player, so teach you kind of hits a little bit of a better spot for me than. Uh, I don't know where you were living, where it, you were like the outsiders of playing cards, but this is oh. very fascinating to me. The fact that like euchre and spades had like a different group. That's oh, wild it's for me. it was. <laughs> I'm serious. It was like one side of the tracks is that's so it, funny. Is is one, and the <laughs> other side was euchre. And um, my sister and I used to play spades. We were like spades partners, mm -hmm. and we were really good to get like. Oh, like no table talk. We could, I mean, we're siblings, right? We're two years sure. apart. We could look in each other's eyes and be like, I'm going to take, we're going to take four tricks. We're taking four books. There we go. Uh, and, stone cold. I love that. Uh, and it, it was like, oh man, we were locked in. We were good. We were really good. I just have really good memories from playing uh, uh, spades back in the day. But, uh, but yeah, man. Uh, anyways, teach you is really good. I would say uh, if you can get the teach you app, and play it you'll learn the game and you can kind of learn it at your your own speed and you can play it and you'll get a really good feel for it and that's going to tell you whether or not you would want to invest the time mm. but uh all right what's your number two there john oh okay so i like i debated i'm like do i have too many trick takers on here i like trick taking sue me no such thing um so this is like a game that I exclusively champion. I feel like I feel like no one's ever played this game. I Dude, love this game. I'm the guy with Happy Salmon on the list, so you're not yeah, gonna get fair. any shade. Uh, for... So this is one of my favorite games. I loved TMG when they were around. I love them so much. Yes. Solar Craft was really good, uh, but I chose Joraku. Um, Joraku is one of my favorite trick takers by far because it also introduces uh, area control. So um, Joraku is uh, you, you are. Uh, daimyo and you're marching your samurai um, towards uh, Kyoto, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, the way the game works is um, if if uh, the card that you play gives you so many actions. I do love Japanese games. So I'm guilty. I pulled up um, an old comment from them because a lot of yours have been Japanese. Yeah, I, I they just they they design so elegantly and so cleverly. I love it. Um, um, I have Condottieri. I haven't played it yet. Um, it's been on my shelf of shame forever. Um, but the cards that you play uh, give you action. So 
Uh, so this is my box. It's very small. I think the new version is freaking huge. It looks like anyway, sure. but I'm counting it. My box is very small. We're good. Uh, it counts. So you you play cards, um, and then the the number on the card oh. determines how many types of actions you have. And actions can include stuff like moving your troops from one area to another, or it lets you deploy troops in that area. So if I play six, I can either get up to three of my troops into slot six, or I can take three actions, which can include marching my troops towards other areas. And you're just trying to, in the three phases of the games, have different area controls in different uh, in different areas. So you can see in round one um, that six is the most valuable at seven points if you win it. Um, but in round two, it's worth nothing. And so the the hook of the game is um, like one if you win six in round one, you then have to march those troops to other areas in order to gain that victory. Um, there's also ninja cards that um, basically pseudo trump the the six or whatever, and aren't anywhere on the board, but they let you place wherever you want. Um, yeah, I I really love this game a lot. Uh, the board is a little is a little small for this for this version, but the new version that you can get is um, it looks a little bigger. Uh, I do I miss CMG very much. Um, and yeah, and those are like the little samurai the daimyo head guys. Uh, I love them. Yeah, I I really. I really love this game. Um, I haven't tried Brian Boru, but I, that's on my list to try. Oh, so I want to play that. Yeah, I've heard I, good yeah. things about Brian Boru. That one, I didn't like that one as much as I thought it would. Oh, interesting. So, um, I'm this. Yeah, this one fascinates me. When you when you slap together, well, when you put area control or area majority in any game, I'm just automatically interested because it forces player interaction. Mm -hmm. um and so yeah with trick taking because brian boro did not work hey mike mike go to the top real quick go to the top of that page all the way up you see what's at the very top i do all right sorry just love for a friend of ours <laughs> i love it uh, rove anyways i didn't expect to see bgg advertising uh for that but awesome uh this game sounds incredible, though. I feel like I really need to play Jiraku. I love area control games. And so to find, like, unique and interesting uh, takes on that and, like, ways to do it, I'm in. You know? Yeah. Like, it, um, I, it's gotten kind of lost in the shuffle. It came out before, like, the, the hotness of trick-taking games, really. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I think it got just a little muddled. Um, I don't really see anybody talk about it. But I love playing it. it it doesn't outstay its well welcome it's about 45 minutes or so because there's a little bit more to munch on um yeah i i, I highly recommend it uh, if if we ever are in a convention i will have a cup my copy with me for sure oh hell yeah excellent man john bringing the heat with like all these games that i've never heard of and dude I've written, so many, I've written down so many. I've written down so many games that I've got to buy because of John. Damn it! Yeah, I have like a really like weird collection. Like I, I don't. Um, I, I'll try the hotness or whatever, but I just like I will like go through like mounds of videos and read about games because I'm always interested in finding weird games mm. or whatever. Because I want to be kind cool. of like a little off the off the beaten path designer mm -hmm. a little bit, right? So. Stand out, man. Stand out by doing something different. For yeah. sure. Okay, mm -hmm. very cool. Uh, all right, so my number two is the deck building game on my list, and Tim already knows what it is. Uh, they had to get a reprint campaign. This is mm -hmm. hard to find at the moment. Uh, so I do like to put games on my list that you can currently purchase, but they reprinted it. They had a campaign for it. It's Shards of Infinity. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you talk about deck building games that are just about the deck building, not adding worker placement, not adding ter territory control. We're talking about just a battle royale deck building game where you're the last person standing you win. I freaking love this game. And all of the different factions really feel well balanced, in my opinion. I've pulled off all of the victories that you can pull off on this. I've seen the instant victory, which is where you've got this mechanic where you're building up this resource called Mastery. And one of your base cards, um, 
all of your base cards have increased levels of abilities depending how high your mastery gets. And so this one card is called the Shard Blaster. If you actually get your in, uh, your mastery maxed out, which is level 30, this Shard Blaster is an insta-kill. Now, it takes a while to get to that point or way too quickly when I played it against Tim that one time. Well, you know. Um, but that's a viable way to win the game is increase your mastery and get an insta kill. Mm -hmm. It's also very viable to just go grab all of the wraith cards, these purple ones, and just go heavy damage and just tech, 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 just keep picking away throughout the entire game. It's also very possible to play the slow game and heal yourself over and over and over until you just outlast other players. That's a completely viable strategy in this game. And of course, mixing these cards and finding different synergies. Ah, oh, Shards of Infinity. I love this one. I will say it's best at two. It's solid at three. It's too long at four. It, it becomes 50 minutes to an hour and, and sometimes even longer if one person's healing. Um, and I think that's too much for this. Keep it to three. It becomes a 40-minute game, and it goes pretty quick. I wouldn't play this at four, personally, and I love this game. Um, yeah, I have, and I, it was too much. I, yeah. I, this is also on my shelf of shame. I have I have the base copy, and I haven't cracked it. Uh, I prefer the 1v1 incredible. head-to-head. Uh, three players works fine, but yeah, four, yeah, too much. Four, got it, sure. Yeah, I've played this a lot. I got 21 plays on this. The first time we did our top 50 ranking, I put this like in our top 20. I, I really love this game. Uh, it, it's still an all-time favorite for me. As a fan of this style of deck builder, uh, yeah, this game's freaking amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, and I was so pleased. I was so pleased to beat Mike so badly uh, at this Mike and I didn't know each other like super well. We were still kind of in that, like we're friends, we love games and we're kind of getting to know each other. Sure. And he's Casual. like, Oh, I really like shards of infinity. I'm like, I do too. Let's play it. And then he's never, he had never, I don't think you'd ever seen anybody win with the mastery before. No, I have just not that quickly. Well, you know, but I had also good. only <laughs> been playing it with Unless like a 13 year old up to that point. Oh, sure. So. <laughs> sure. Uh, but I'm a big fan of like deck building games and especially the ones where you go like head to head. I mean, I used to play magic gathering, I love uh, that. you know, and stuff like that. I never, I'm not competitive enough to want to invest the money into magic. Like I just like playing, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and stuff. I, of course I love winning. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, I would much rather have like an interesting sparring back and forth, you know, and see some things unfold. Uh, but shards really scratches that itch really well. Um, mm. I love it. Uh, I'm also a big fan of the DC uh, deck building game. Uh, similar buy system. I'm a big Ascension fan, right? I mean, that makes sense. Uh, Ascension's got like basically the two currencies. You've got your combat and your your purchasing power for lack of a better and uh so shards kind of has the same thing right you've got that extra currency because you've got your shard you've got your purchasing power you've got your attack and then you can build up that big energy attack right you build up that mastery level uh which then allows you to trigger like better versions of the card sometimes as you play it uh depending on what your mastery is so mike just got at the on the wrong end of i was getting some very good cards that were better more beneficial if you increased your mastery and so i was kind of really heavily focusing on that and then before he knew it like i was maxed out at mastery and then was able to kill him uh diana thank you so much for hanging out uh dead man's draw is one million percent on my honorable mention uh i've Jaipur not is good. i've not played yeah. jaipur Jai Pier is one of my honorable mentions. Um, but uh, we love the Rossies. Thank you so much, uh, y'all, for being here. And Mike, I recently picked up Farmer's Market, but haven't played it yet. Yeah, haven't played. Haven't played. Are we ready for number ones? We're ready for our best small box games. Mm. Oh, my God. Okay, so Mike knew what my number one was 
the second that this list came up. Uh, it, it's easily my most played game of the last six months, as long as I've had this game in my possession. Wow. It is a, a reprint, a retheme of like crossings and something else. Uh, it is a Japanese designer. So I am with John Wood here. Yeah. Um, no, Chris, it is not. Hey, that's my fish. Chris I do love that knows. game though. <laughs> Chris already knows what this game is. It is Ahoy Kitten from Mayday Games. I freaking love this game so much. John, have you played Ahoy Kitten? I have not. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my God. <laughs> just based it's, on so, the art. it's so bananas. Okay. So let's say the three of us are playing Ahoy Kitten. Okay. There's going to be two tiles on the table in front of us because it's it's one tile. My, or it's 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 a tile per person per player minus one. Sure. So what's going to happen is I'm going to hold up a finger. Everybody's going to hold up a finger. We're going to go one, two, three point. We're going to point to a tile. Those tiles are going to be seeded with fish uh, randomly out of a bag. And the fish are going to be different colors because you're going to use the fish for set collection. Um, okay. So if I, if you and I are pointing to the same tile and Mike is pointing to a different tile, you and I get nothing because we're pointing to the same tile. You have to point mm. to a tile that nobody's pointing at. Mm. Mike is going to take the fish off of that tile and he's going to put it on the tile in front of him. And then we're going to repopulate the tiles. If a tile didn't uh, have fish taken from it, it only gets one. Otherwise, it, if it's completely empty, we're going to put three fish on that tile. Mm. So now we're going to go one, two, three. But now we can point at Mike's tile because his tile has fish on it. Mike also has the option of covering his tile. If he covers his tile, he's going to take those fish and he's basically going to bank them and he's going to save them away for a future or for the end scoring. Nobody can touch him, but he misses a round. He, you flip your tile over to the boat side it you're sailing off. Uh, and then you, uh, so then it would just be you and I, we can point to the tiles you know, that we want, we can still point to the same tile and not get anything. Mike comes back and now there's just more fish for him to pick from. Mm. Um, this game gets rowdy and wild because it's like, don't quit pointing to the same tile as me. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen tiles like heaped with like 10, 11 fish because it's like, they keep pointing to the same one. And it's like, you, you're, you're just looking at the person across from you and you're like, I'm not going to stop pointing at this tile. You <laughs> need to stop pointing because I'm going to take it. Uh, you know, it's just so much fun. This game is so fast because uh, you play till you run out of fish in the bag. And then at the very end, if you have a set of three, uh, so if you have a set of the orange, red, and blue fish, that's worth five points. Any that don't fill in that set are just worth one point individually. And then there's the there are these clear fish tokens. They're technically white. Um, if you have any of the clear fish tokens, they don't add to a set. They're worth two points individually. Uh, and you just you just go till everybody till the bag runs out. You can't populate tiles anymore. That'll be the last round. One, two, three point. Any fish you have in your possession, whether you're they're on your tile or you have banked them on a previous turn, you do up your scores. I've seen Bob score zero points in this game. It was a beautiful thing. Um, but it yes, pretty funny when somebody scores zero. But again, so I taught my I taught my family again. I taught them this game the same time I was teaching people cockroach poker. And I don't know which one they loved more, to be honest. They had so much fun because again, there's that like, you're just like one, two, three and point. And it's like, oh, stop, stop pointing to my stuff. You know, and like, sometimes you can, you can like even game it a little. And you're like, well, look, they that tile's got a set on it right now. If you were to point to that tile or, oh, if John, John might point to that tile because he needs that those redfish on that tile. I don't need those redfish on that tile. Maybe I'm totally going to point that tile. You know what I mean? Or maybe I'm just trying to get somebody else to point to that tile. So that makes it my odds of getting the tile I need better. You know, and you can kind of press your luck because maybe you don't cover your own tile because you want to try to keep gathering more fish. Because if I if I cover my own tile, not only am I not gaining any extra fish, I'm not going to gain any extra fish that next round. But I do guarantee that I'm scoring those points, you right. know. So there's really good, really good 
uh, uh, choices there, really good strategy. And this game's so simple, and the theme is so stinking cute, and the art is adorable. Um, this game, it, it's just so much fun because it's it's almost like poker where you are almost playing the players as much as you're playing the game. I love games like that. Um, this this game's incredible. It's from Mayday Games. I will not shut up about it because I freaking love yeah. it. Yeah, um, I I don't even own this game, and it's still my most played game this year. I was gonna say my two <laughs> probably. Well, and again, like you never just play this game once. You play no. this game two, three times in a row because it goes so fast. Um, yeah. yeah, Chris, the bag is kind of shit, but uh, yeah, Bobby, this game's yeah. fantastic. I love it. This game's so good. Bling it out. Get a better bag. I know I should. I honestly should, but it wouldn't fit in that small box. Well, you just got to get a small bag. Get a bigger bag <laughs> and then just put everything inside the bag. You know what? Hey. I could take I could take these this whiskey stones bag that because the whiskey stones suck so bad and maybe use this bag for my fish. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, get game in oh, knows what's now we're, uh, talking. Now we're talking. Uh, but anyways, Ahoy Kitten, Mike texted me earlier uh, when we were talking about our list, and he's like, I'll let you have a Ahoy Kitten. And I'm like, you don't let me have nothing. I'm going to take it. I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> I knew it had to be on his list. It's just Come that on. good. I love it. I play uh, this game too damn much. Eric has a great lunch. point. Too bad it doesn't come with a cheese bag. That is a Third World Studios joke, if you don't know. It is. Say fresh cheese bags. Uh, so... Uh, John, I, I'm dying to hear what your number one is. Well, uh, so I've had almost exclusively Japanese games until this point. Uh, it is not a, a Japanese game, however. Um, so earlier it was brought up Brainer Knizia. I said he's like my favorite designer. Oh, yeah, this yeah. Be the game why. Uh, I believe when you guys were talking to Andrew, you, I, I had brought this up in chat, and you guys were like, ah, oh, we haven't played it. I love this game. It is the reason why I can't really make a like a – like a bidding game because i don't think i could ever make something that even comes close to this and that is high society <gasps> i've heard I, uh, yeah uh, i remember i love remember you bringing this up this game so much uh this is in my like top 10 favorite games of all time if not my top five um and it is an amazing game um uh the fact that it came out like if you tell people like hey this came out in 95 people are like what <laughs> um yeah, so um, you are bidding on these cards. You are basically the affluent, and you um, you all have the same amount of money, and you have like weird denominations. You have like a one, a two, a four, a five, a seven, stuff like that. And everyone has the same denominations. And when you're bidding for cards, uh, if they're like one of the normal cards, they're worth point values one through ten. And but once you play a card that is worth money, um, you cannot pick it up again. So if I bid five, and you want to bid six, and there's no six cards. You need to, if you already have like your five on the table, you need to figure out how to make like these weird denominations without picking up your cards now. Because mm. like once they're locked to the table, they're locked to the table unless you lose the, the bid. And then in which case you get the cards back. So the fact that you can't like pick up a previous bid and then make a new one um, means that you might end up bidding slightly higher than you would maybe want to. Um, there are cards that... Um, that can have your score there are cards that can double your score and of course people go like bid super high for that um the game ends where there's like these blue cards um three of them are, are score doublers and one of them is a score haver when the final blue card comes out the game immediately ends so there's a little bit of that that randomized chance of like do i really bid for this thing like if i don't get it um like i don't know how many turns we have left but the big uh thank you for having me uh the big the big hook of the game is at the end of the game, whoever has spent the most money is out immediately, even if they have the highest score, because they're not rich enough to be a part of the high society. So you can go hard as hard as you want, but if you have the least money, it doesn't matter. And and like telling people this, like it like dawns on them of like a, you want to get the highest score, but bid the second highest amount. And I think that's incredibly cl yes. clever. Um, this is wow. uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I love this game. It's so so good. So that's good. similar to what QE does. Uh, mm -hmm. Where if you bid the most money, you've bankrupted your country. And you exactly. Yeah, QE I think directly yeah. got it from this game. For yeah, sure. I had. I've guess. heard so many great things about this because I, well, I love Kinesia as well, and I love bidding, and of course I love his bidding games. 
modern art is is just an absolute classic to me um but i just i just need to buy this game i've heard so many great things about it yeah it, sounds it awesome. is it is uh super elegant uh just the hook um and uh yeah like i've played qe and stuff and i think qe is great um this just has like a it's just like it's it, it's a the most like pure form of it and it just has like that kind of tension that almost like lost cities has or whatever when you're bidding for things and yeah um there's cards that you like bid for not getting like uh like you can um yeah i yeah it has it kind of has like all the best things kind of in kinetia games like different kinds of bidding um but there's like much smaller scale and it, it's just so clever Hmm. i got man i gotta play this damn game yeah i well yeah i just need to get it like shipped here like so it shows up friday <laughs> <laughs> dang good yeah pick. Thank you. Mike, what you got? Wow. Um, all right. So we briefly talked about this one earlier. Um, Tim won't be surprised about this one at all. I've really been obsessed with it ever since it came out. Um, it's Splendor Duel. Oh, mm. yeah. Uh, so I already enjoyed Splendor. And I know some people, it doesn't work. That's fine. Um, but Splendor Duel takes Splendor and improves it in every possible way. So it's not just the the simple engine building of collecting these cards and uh, trying to build up toys, these point cards. Um, you know, now, instead of your chips just being constantly available, your chips are actually going to go out on this grid. You can still take three, but they have to be adjacent to each other. Uh, so if the chips aren't available on this board, well, you can't take them. So that sometimes means there's very tactical turns where you're only taking two chips or sometimes just one chip because you really need that one chip. and there's only one of them left on the board. When you buy cards, you don't just put them back on the board so they're readily available. When you buy cards, you put your chips back into a bag. Now, as a separate action, you can refill the board with all the chips from the bag. So now it adds this really clever timing mechanic where if you're holding a bunch of chips and the other player is holding a bunch of chips, guess what? There's none in the bag. So refilling the board doesn't do you anything. And so there's this really fun reverse psychology where you're trying to make the other person refill the board before you do um, because they, they will get first dibs. But off to the side here, you've got these privilege tokens. Before your turn, you can turn in a privilege token and take any chip off the board. So giving someone a privilege token, like, yeah, it's cool to refill the board and get first dibs, but it's just you hate giving people privilege tokens because they're so useful. It's like a whole turn in itself. You're one chip away from fulfilling a card. That chip's on the board and you've got a privilege token. You don't have to wait two turns. Boom, privilege token. Boom, buy that card. It, it It's those those privilege tokens and refilling this board from the bag just revitalized this game. Um, Mike, you know who's really good at this game? Who's that? Donnie. Donnie Coleman. Oh, yeah. He's forced oh my me on BTA. God. <laughs> me too. I, was, I, was, I thought I was really good at it, and then he destroyed me. Oh, my God. I was such a sucker accepting I'm, that game invite he destroyed me <laughs> i'm definitely better uh there he is there's donnie lurker. <laughs> <laughs> so we reference him then he pops in yep i'm here uh but uh no um i also like how they have they have different uh win conditions as well it's not just a race to 15 anymore yeah. they actually made it 20 but you can win by um with crowns which is just a new icon on the cards or you can win by getting to 10 and just one color so if you just see one player racing one color, uh, you have to try to stop them from doing that. I just, I think everything they did with this version is better than the base game. I feel better knowing that Donnie also smoked you uh, at this. I feel yeah. like you and I could form a support group with like other people that Donnie <laughs> has destroyed at Spider Duel. 
Hi, my name is Mike. Did you also get destroyed by <laughs> yeah. Donnie at Splendor Duel? Yes, I also got destroyed by Donnie. At I lost by 15 um, points at Splendor Duel to Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> if you think that's bad, don't play him at Gizmos. Just don't. Oh don't my even, gosh. Just yeah. don't. Um, uh, <clears throat> so there you go. So wait, so John, earlier when, when we were talking, and it may have been off camera, had you played Splendor Duel yet? I haven't played Thunder Duel. I've played the original uh, Splendor, and I like it fine. Uh, I played it on BGA a lot. Uh, I haven't tried Duel, but I'm it definitely looks really good. I'm going to guess if you like it fine, you're going to enjoy Duel quite a bit. Yeah. I'm just going to guess, because Duel does some really neat things. And honestly, I if I'm going to play Splendor, I like to just play it with like two players. Like My wife and I will play Splendor a lot. I just haven't bought Splendor Duel yet. I think she would love Splendor Duel. But. Sure. Yeah, a lot of my games were two-player. I love two-player games, mm -hmm. uh, just in general. I make a lot of two-players. Make Manhattan's two-player. Um, yeah, there's something about like that back and forth that's really satisfying. I do really just like the dual games in general. Uh, what's the Egyptian-themed one with the Ankh that moves around? Seven Wonders? No. No, no, no. Uh, I mean, Seven Wonders does have an Ankh in it, but... Yeah. No, there's like this little Ankh on a board. It's from Pandasaurus. Oh. Um, but... Uh, like that is like the best version of that game. So, um, Sobek, thank you. Thanks, oh, Donnie. Donnie's on it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Sobek two player one is really good. So, um, yeah. Uh, I, I definitely, it's definitely high up on my list for games I want to try. Um, so if we're capable, let's, uh, run through what our top tens were. Like, I'll just say my 10 that John, you can do your 10. Mike can do his 10. And then we will, uh, we will wrap up with a with a rant. Is that right, Mike? Yeah, we're gonna do an end rant. If you got a, if in John, you can participate if you like. If you if you have something you kind of just want to hit on, we'll get into it when we get there. But uh, just to give you a heads up, anyways, my number ten is Confusing Lands from Envy Board Games. Um, you can pre order it now. Um, my number nine is Seven Bridges. My number eight is Acornism, also on Kickstarter right now, but it's a reprint, so it qualifies. My number seven is Happy Salmon. You can also go find Happy Salmon. I just ordered that. Can't wait to play it. Um, my number six is Kinfire Delve, Vainglory's Grotto. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that any of the Kinfire games are really good. I've only played the one, but I loved it. It's um, a safe assumption. Yeah, my number five is Ultimate Uno, right? Uno Ultimate, whatever the proper term is. I guess it's Uno Ultimate. Uh, Marvel or DC-themed Uno, really good. Different win conditions. Takes a game you think you know and, and makes it a lot better. Uh, my number four is a Trick Taker, Potato Man. Uh, my number three, the ultimate bluffing game, Cockroach Poker. My number two is For Sale. And my number one, with a finger point, is a hoy kitten. Gosh it, dang it. I love a hoy kitten. What's an honorable mention that you didn't put, oh, put on your list? You know what? I will say love letter. I know Mike doesn't love love letter. I love love letter. I think love letter is really good. I enjoy sort of, again, that mental aspect of like, oh, I'm going to play this card. I'm going to guess something, you know, I, I don't know. I really like love letter a lot. I really so. um, respect love letter it like really like brought small games into like the zeitgeist of of board games like really like micro games really weren't that popular mm -hmm. until love letter so i mean and i know it's not everybody's cup of tea mike does not like love letter um very much have, have you tried infinity gauntlet have not so infinity have... gauntlet is a version of letter letter it's my favorite way to play it's one versus many so one person is thanos and they get to take two turns and then um, everyone else gets to take their turn, and you are trying to like lower his health down to zero. Very, very good. Oh, he can, and he has like a shoot the moon where he just gets all the infinity stones and he wins immediately, no. which is really fun. <laughs> that sounds awesome. That sounds it is, cool. It is. It's really good. I I love it. Um, Gosh. Infinity Gauntlet. I, I yeah. almost put it on my top ten. Damn you, John! I gotta. Thing. I'm writing down another game it's, that I need. To yeah, it's yeah, it's one versus many, which I think is really neat. Yeah, I yeah. I think my my issue. I just don't I. I struggle to see why it's as highly regarded other than maybe like you said, John is being like one of those early putting small box games on the map type of thing. It's but, as far as it, but as far as it carrying its weight now, I just don't think it does. I think there's just so many games that are better. Uh, I think it goes on a bit 
too long when you're playing to like three or four victories. And I think it's just a, too random for what it is. So, yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. Andrew Thank Styles you. chiming oh. in. Andrew. Uh, I I haven't played any of John's games yet, Andrew, but I'm going to guess by his taste oh, in will. games that this dude is knows what's up. So Thank you. I appreciate it. I have dedicated like the last seven years of my life to, to design. It is all I have really done. So I'm trying. <laughs> dude, dude, uh, regardless of what happens, you've been an absolute pleasure. Uh, well, thank so you. It's, it's been it's, great to be here. Uh, so let's hear, let's hear your uh, top ten. Cool. So I let off with uh, Okie Dokie, the version that you can find level 10, just a limited information cooperative game. Uh, my next game was The Fox in the Forest or Fox in the Forest Duet. Take your pick. Uh, trick taking game. Um, I chose for my next game, I tr chose um, Seasons of Rice, a little button shy game, a little tile layer. Um, I then chose a fake artist uh, goes to New York for my um, six. Uh, I guess it would be my seven. Mm -hmm. um, my sixth pick was um, Nine Lives from All Play. It's a little intro trick taking game. Um, I then went with five. I kind of stepped on Mike a little bit, but he graciously just let me have it, and we we, we shared uh, with Scout. Mm -hmm. um, my fourth, my my number four pick was Ohanami. A um, little simple uh, card drafting game. Um, I then chose Rome, which you guys just like it just barely made the the cutoff. A good little Red Raven game. Um, I then chose Joraku. Uh, for my second pick, and my my uh, favorite small box game is by far High Society. I love it. I love it. So many awesome game suggestions. Um, Thank you. Uh, the game I wish I could have said was Skull. I love Skull. If you like bluffing. I've never played Sk Skull, but I'd Skull. love to. Uh, so good. Skull is so good. I love that box art. Skull is fun. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. So you just, it's like dead simple. Like it also gives me creator envy. Uh, you have like a little a thing that you put your cards on, and then you just have four cards. Three of them are flowers, one of them is a skull. You put one down, and then on your turn, you can either put another one down, or you can start bidding. Uh, when you're bidding, you're trying to say how many of you can, how many of these cards you can flip without hitting the skull. But you always have to start with yours. So it's mm -hmm. like this double bluff thing where if you go, I think I could do two. If you like put a skull down, people will think that you have a flower down because you have to reveal yours first. But then sometimes it gets all the way back around to you because everyone's played skulls, and then you have to like reveal that you played a skull. Oh, it's so good. It is fun. Yeah, I love to play skull, man. I would love to play skull. It yeah, sounds so I, good. It sounds like my kind of game. So it, it, yeah, it's I put them in the same bucket as like uh, cockroach poker. I think if you like one, you like oh, the definitely. other. Yeah, and I love sure. I love both of those games. Yeah. So thank you for all the kind no words, everybody. No. I'm sure they are warranted. Mike. Um, yeah, so I went with my number 10 was Point City. Mm. Number nine was Longboard. Number eight is Dandelions. Number seven is Gan Shown Clever, but all those games are great. Pick one. Number six, Bag of Chips, which is on BGA. Five, also pick Scout. Didn't even want to change it. It's a great yeah, that's game. So mm -hmm. good. That's so solid, good. Solid, solid. Number four, Marvel Marvel Remix. But if all you can find is Fantasy Realms, go for it. They're just as good. Number three is The Crew, because I just love that cooperative element. Number two, Shards of Infinity. By far my car, favorite card-only deck-building game. And number one, uh, the game I've played so much since I got it last year, Splendor Duel. Yeah. Uh, I is... just won't play splend regular splendor two players anymore there's no reason to and sure. i always almost always play splendor two players so i don't say often that this game replaced this game but splendor duel replaced splendor for me you know what's funny mike is that i only own splendor so that would be the only reason why i would play splendor over splendor duel but um, but you're right. I mean, my per, like my favorite way to play Splendor is just two players. It goes nice and fast. Um, so I already really liked it at two players anyways. And then I played Duel. I was a little skeptical because I only heard that, oh, these so amazing things. And it's Splendor Duel is so good. And it's like, really, is it that good? And then I played it. I'm like, ah, that's pretty damn good. Um, so what what's your honorable do? mention that we couldn't get to? 
Oof. Um, all right. I'll start with some. Um, Biblios. Ah, oh, Biblios out is of good. Print now and for King and uh, for the King and Me mm -hmm. uh, has a bigger box, and I I I looked at the dimensions on Amazon, and I was like, nah, too big. That's the but version I have. Yeah. Biblios is one of my most played games of all time. Again, I love auction and bidding games. It's just so clean. It's so good. And again, I love the mechanic of okay, I've got to draw five cards, but I have to draw them one at a time and make a decision. And then hope if I gave up that card, the next one I draw is better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just that mechanic is genius. Um, yeah, it's really good. I have For the King of Me as well. Um, and yeah, I do love that game very much. Yeah, Biblios um, is good. I'll just do. Um, we Diana brought up cartographers. That's another great role. Oh, I, I, was, I almost put it in my my. Uh, it's an honorable spot. mention for me as well. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That was a I that was a. If somebody had picked one of mine, I was going to slide cartographers in. Uh, I could have sure. put that instead of Gan Sean Clever. I just went with uh, Sean Clever because it's a classic, and I still play it, and I played it a lot more. One thing uh, I was surprised I, that didn't come up was Long Shot the Dice Game. I don't love Long Shot the Dice Game. Um, so I have a weird relationship with that game. When I first, so I love Push Your Luck and I love racing games and I love betting. Same. Same. So you like add all those things. And I, at first I fell in love with that game, uh -huh. but I, I was only playing it with like two players, which I still found enjoyable and three and four. As soon as I played it with a group of eight, I felt like it dragged. Yeah, and it was fair. really obvious that, like, okay, his horse is going to move back. All right? You got that? Okay, that horse is going to move back. Okay, let's just wait for all the horses to move back, and then we can proceed with playing the game. And that became very predictable, and it dragged out larger groups of sure. that game. And so I love it at small counts and at higher counts where I really actually wanted the game to shine. I think it suffers. Sure. It, that game was only ever just fine for me. Um, but, and I, I originally played it like three and four. I've never played the larger version. I can't imagine playing at a larger count. I think I would be yeah, like, I'm yeah. done. Uh, because I played it at three and four and was like, okay, that was fine. What's else? What else do we got? Um, but uh, also want to mention um, processing. Mike, did you, you play processing with us? I did. That's a fight in a box game uh, designed by Seppi Yoon. Oh my God. Processing is so <laughs> darkly themed. Basically aliens have come to earth and um, you are helping decide how humans are going to be processed, uh, whether they're going to be used for like food uh, or, um, I forget. There's like three different things, three different categories. And so you're basically lining up, you're, you're bidding to line up cards in different ways as to like how you're going to use people. And then you you've got like scoring, you've got a, like a secret scoring objective. So you're trying mm -hmm. to, to get these guys to line, to line up in certain ways. Uh, and, and you need them, you need, you're voting basically. Um, but processing was really good. I'm describing it poorly and yes, get gaming. I actually, we did a food bait, like top 10 or top five food games. And I had all of my games had people being I used as food. It. All, all I gave games with people being used as food. Um, um, Andrew. So we specifically picked games that are published uh, I did mention at my number eight Longboard, published by 25th Century, so that I could give Wine Cellar a shout out because I would pick it over Longboard if it was published. And Andrew, uh, I think let, it's fantastic. Let me throw Mike under the bus real quick. Mike made a point to get a copy of Wine Cellar, right? And then in the middle of March, Mike is famously a diehard sports fanatic, which means <laughs> I will not see Mike during March. Because anytime I'm playing games, Mike is watching basketball. Mike, how many times have you played Wine Cellar? It's my most played uh, after Let's a whole kitten. It's my most played game. That's so, so good. So how many times? At least five? Six times. Six times. Six times. Six times. You know how many times None. I've seen the physical copy of that game? Because the one person in our group that has the game, I'm like, Mike, we need to do a video on Wine Cellar. Yeah, we do. 
Uh, how about next weekend? I can't basketball. Okay, how about the weekend after? Uh, I can't basketball. How about the weekend basketball? Mike, the state bowling tournament. <laughs> Mike, let me play white we're cellar. Playing it, we're playing it Sunday. I know it's, we are. I got to give you a hard okay. time. I got to give you a hard time only because I love Andrew. I'm dying to play wine cellar and I love my, like, I think it's going to live up to your expectations. It's very good. I have no doubt because when Andrew was a guest on our show and he had explained it and he talked about it, I'm like, how is this not going to be amazing? Um, Mike is trying. No, hold on. Get gaming. Mike isn't playing basketball. He is watching watching basketball. I, I mean, yeah, during the opening round of the tournament, when they play games from noon to midnight, I watch basketball for 12 consecutive hours. That's that's just my addiction. Now, um, hold on. College football season, I watch college football from noon till one in the morning. I get it. Uh, exercise yeah. by osmosis. Now, if you so, watch me watch Notre Dame games, it is a cardio workout because I'm jumping up and down. I'm screaming. I'm yelling. Uh, I'm not sitting down. But – that's just me. Uh, so we'll also be shooting our preview video on Sunday. So yeah. Well, it'll we'll be a straight up review. Opinions very soon. Yeah, I can't wait. No, it's a review though. It's not a Kickstarter. We only do previews for games that are going to crowdfunding. Andrew's game is published. Straight to retail. That's right. Yeah. There's rules. We gotta adhere to rules, otherwise it's chaos. <laughs> nice. Have you tried sea salt and paper? No, but I've heard amazing things. Me too. I've uh, heard amazing yeah, things. Yeah, I, I I don't understand why people think it's amazing. I, I thought it was fine. Oh. Uh, so uh, uh, uh John, do uh do you have like a rant? Do you want to go second? Do you want to go third? Do you want to be skipped? Anything you're um, geeking out on, or any, anything you're geeking out on, you just want to highlight or talk about. Anything could qualify for a rant. Uh, yeah, that you well, want. so I almost exclusively like I, I live in the games here, so it's going to be uh, a game rant. But I do have one. Um, so I've been playing a lot of Magic lately. I actually have like a commander group that we meet. Uh, Ooh, you and Bobby Friday. would be good friends. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, but I need to rant. Uh, mm-hmm. Stop releasing sets every month <laughs> it's too expensive <laughs> it is, it's too expensive it's unnecessary and it like leads to like um just apathy towards the game i think ma- magic is ma- magic is like one of my uh favorite games that but i put them in like separate buckets like fury dracula is like my favorite game but like magic is like i don't know it's like because it's like a lifestyle game i don't know how to mm-hmm. how to put it um but like so like last month we got fallout this month is cowboys which i'm really excited about but like I'd be even more excited if it was like one set every three months, one set every well, four like they months. used to do. They used to do yeah. one set a quarter, and yeah. you could get you had plenty of time to get all the cards you wanted. You could now buy boxes and packs and whatever. Now it's now it's like a set a month, like legit. And um, they also have said that they're where they're gonna do more universes beyond stuff, which is like they did Lord of the Rings, which did really well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, they just released Fallout. Um, Assassin's Creed is coming later this year. Marvel is coming next year, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of cool and all, but they they keep them within that theme. And I would like to see in universe versions because mm-hmm. uh, when I see like a Transformers, like when um, when Megatron is is as across from me, I get like this weird kind of dissonance. And, uh, yeah, I just think that they're like bleeding the game a little bit too much. And it's, um, it's just, it's, it's a lot. It's, there's it like feels, really cool stuff and stuff, but slow down, pump the brakes. It, it feels like oversaturation it at is. this point, right? It is. Right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is bad. <laughs> um, Mike. Yeah. You ready for my rant? I am. Um, can, yeah. Let's can you, it. can you bring up a Kickstarter page? Oh, Yes. Do you know which one I'm going to talk about? Is it the one you showed me earlier? They already have it, my little pony cards. Uh, it is. User. It uh, is the one I showed you. They already have okay, my little pony. I can find it. <laughs> That's the weird part. A R S dash M E C H A. Oh, there's the version. Okay, so now hold on, uh, John. You're going to Kickstarter soon, right? With something? Yes. I found okay. Foot. Please. Okay, so. I'm going to assume you are going to do a better job with your font choices than this game. 
that I see it on kick that I saw advertised on Facebook and then became it, it could for a for a Kickstarter project. The to font get this is to work. I got to use the picture. Is it wingdings? No, wingdings it's funny. <laughs> no, it's worse. It's that would worse. Be brutal. Dang it. Okay. Well, the they don't have that font on the Kickstarter page. It's apparently only in the ads, which makes it even worse. Okay. So, so it's yeah, almost 100%. like it's a. It's almost like it's a clickbait mm -hmm. ad because of the font. So show the picture I sent sent you earlier if you can oh, yeah that's so kind of off the guard that's kind of cool. that oh no it's bad that... we'll see it might be it might be smart guerrilla marketing it might be like the like the outrage bait so this is for a role playing game uh module and i think it's supposed to be pirates but it's like cyberpunk pirates cool or steam excuse me not cyberpunk steampunk pirates um okay. Okay. And it's supposed to be R Mechana, A R S dash Mechana or Mechana. Mechana. But the, uh, can you that read looks, that thought? It looks like, um, it looks like one of those saucy books that you see like old people read. Yeah, read that top word. Does that <laughs> look like ass mechanic to you? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it looks like ass <laughs> mechanic. <laughs> and again, I I hate that art style because this is supposed to be. This is not what this game <laughs> is. Like it's a module, you know, for like fifth edition D and D, but it looks like <laughs> a pirate slash fic called we ass mechanic. Did. And um, <laughs> get a wrench up in there. <laughs> 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 this has just been blowing me away. Like, I can't believe it. Get gaming. Hey, dude, no judgment. <laughs> uh, Do you think that this part is, is AI? Uh, I, it looks it's AI kind of, generated to me, but I don't, I don't want to throw that out there just yeah, in case. It, yeah. But no, it, it, just, really, it, it really it looks. like the vibes. Um, yeah, I'm getting better at picking it up. And, and you know, my buddy Bobby has been known to be an ass mechanic, but that looks like something completely like I, I saw that, that, the, oh, that the screen on the, the phone is like slightly like indented. So it like, it just says it, it Chanic over here. Yeah. 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 It Chanic. Yeah. 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 So I was, uh, I was already uh, like, like what is going on with this? I was looking at it. I was reading the comments and then Mike and I were talking about rants and then I kind of spoiled it a little because normally I try not to talk too much about to Mike about like what my list is going to be or, you know, things. Cause I like to just get those fresh, you know, hot take reactions, but this, I could not resist. Um, Rich says, y'all need to stop getting it twisted. It clearly says arse mechanic. Yeah. Um, where's that E? I think what's annoying too about this is that if you look at the actual Kickstarter page, it doesn't use that same font. And so mm -hmm. it feels to me literally like it's just a clickbait ad where they intentionally chose the worst font to make it look like ass mechanic to get clicks. And I hate that. Big brain. Uh, especially when you slap AI art on top of so it. I, yeah, intentionally, I don't know if it is, but it just looks a little that way. I intentionally did not Absolutely. click on the link, but I went to my Kickstarter oh, app on my phone and typed in what I thought the title was supposed to be and found it so I could look at it from there. But I was like, I do not want to generate a click from that link that was shared because I was like, no. No, I will look it up on my own. Someone needs to hire a new graphic designer. Yeah, dude. Um, or a graphic designer. Right, so. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But yeah, I saw exactly, that. Exactly, Eric. Uh, it's totally clickbait. And then you go to this, it looks like one of those rushed, underdeveloped things because this campaign page is just like a wall of text. And Ugh. hey, I, I mean, seriously, there, there is there needs to be representation and appeal for everyone in the hobby, right? Because mm -hmm. it's it's not all just straight white dudes like me that are into games, right? You know, there's there's all kinds, all creeds and colors, right? You know, and and and, um, and there we all just you know everybody deserves representation. 
but that one was a little weird for like eh, i don't feel like that that's being honest um but uh but yeah man i just i saw that i thought it was hilarious i had to talk about it because um i was just like what the what the hell is this ass ass mechanic and again because of the way like the font cuts off like it doesn't even look like mechana you know what i mean you know or or something like that which i know is what they're going for right which again that steampunk you know kind of pirate thing again sounds like a really cool setting very cool that but, art i got i only saw pirate i didn't see any like steampunk actually. but that yeah i guess i get steampunk from the mechana yeah but, but like but, if they're if that's what they're going for the art doesn't show it no they should have given somebody at least like a steampunky eye patch or something yeah right? like a like a like kano's eye from mortal kombat that would right be like, right that yeah. would be oh that would be but the problem is maybe they were using ai generated art and it just looks like really weird looking people um, i don't know hmm, yeah because but... like when you when you go to the campaign page i think it i think it actually has to be the front of the book um of like the the campaign book because when you actually go to the campaign it doesn't have like it's got this font oh uh, yeah that's then, way different like on the actual preview video up here now we've got Ask ours mechanica yeah mechanica okay. so. but it looks like ass mechanics on the yes, on the i know the uh the yeah. the font color actually on the lower one is also bleeding into the background very much uh, so it's a terrible choice yeah color. like the the ars is like bleeding into her hat a little bit like i can't make that out clearly right. like uh just like just like yeah. putting like black lettering around your fonts would help a lot but you know. yeah like the font was was great because it's readable unlike this that looks like ass um literally <laughs> but yeah they um yeah they just had to use that for their for their ads, and again too. maybe maybe lore wise uh that makes sense right like that that particular term mom we've got pirates of the caribbean at home i love it thank you eric oh my Good god night, andrew. that's an amazing joke andrew thank you so much thanks andrew for putting us in touch with john you were correct he was an amazing guest and um really look forward to having uh more more john you gotta in my, try my games you gotta try my games How do you no no <laughs> doubt dude no doubt um so mike please give us your sports rant because i know it's coming yeah he knows it's coming uh so we actually kind of stole this segment uh so we were on the beans and dice podcast and at the end of their podcast they do like a here talk about whatever's on your mind segment we thought that's really cool so, yes, I'm huge into basketball. I went to Purdue University, and I'm a 6'3 guy from the state of Indiana, and we we just bleed basketball here. Um, and so uh, I just – ball is life for me. Purdue uh, got to the national championship game, um, and I actually even drove out to see them play in Detroit uh, last weekend. It was incredible. Uh, it was the first time. On Monday, they got to the national championship game for the first time since 18, 18, ha, 1969. Mm -hmm. They lost. They lost by 15. Uh, UConn was a much better team, uh, but I'm just very proud of how well they played, and they did so with class, uh, and they did so on the back of maybe the greatest player that will ever put on a Purdue jersey. Now, that said, let me ask you a question. If – Let's say you're playing a board game with someone and somebody wins the game by, let's say, 15 points. Like Just randomly pick that number. Okay, let's say somebody wins a board game by 15 points. Okay. After, after I heard Eric was like 6'7". He's crazy. tall. Anybody, He's tall. Anybody taller than me is 6'12", by the way. It's just automatic. Um, after you win that board game by 15 points and blow out all the other players, let's say that one of the other players was assisting other players and offering strategy tips to the other players to try to help those other players beat that person who won by 15. Now, 
That happened during the game. And let's go say that that person that won by 15 points spent the next several days complaining about the player offering the strategy tips to the other players. And this is the person that won. I make this analogy because immediately after this game was over, where UConn won by 15 points, you could, you could watch the telecast and on TBS – uh, the coach of UConn was complaining about the officiating. They won this game. They actually they beat every team in the tournament by 14 or more points. They blew out every team they played. So the first thing you do when a microphone is shoved in your mouth after you won the national championship for the second consecutive year is complain about the officiating? And then not only did he do it immediately after the game, then Sports Illustrated interviewed him, and he was still complaining about the officiating. And then Tuesday, Pat McAfee had him on their show, and he was still complaining about the officiating. You won the national championship for the second year in a row. You blew out every team you played, and you are complaining days later. Dan Harley, I have one simple message for you. Shut up and just win elegantly. Learn how to win, dude. Learn how to win. That's, That's it. That's all. Like, I mean, really, when if I'm... someone blows everyone else out and then complains for days about the how the other players played, how annoying would that be? I would That's not play with that. I would I would not sit at a table with that person again. Yeah, that's 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 high on my list of not interesting. Thank you. Yeah. On the, in the first half of that game, I, I've watched them play before, but like, you know, when they're playing your team, your school, you pay a lot more attention. During the first half, every time there was like a foul called and there was a dead ball and they like go to timeout or something, he would sprint onto the court and get like right in the referee's face just to complain directly in their face. It was almost childlike to watch this person running at full speed across the court to then like make an abrupt stop directly in front of the referee's face to complain. You just, you won. Like, now, now, Mike, complaining. I will also say though, to his credit, it worked because then there'd be like three consecutive game time minutes where there were no penalties called on UConn. My wife and my in-laws are Purdue grads. They are diehard Purdue fans like Mike. My in-laws were in Detroit for the game and then flew to Arizona for the Final Four game and the National Championship game. They were there. Uh, they're that insanely you know, like dedicated fans. They go to all the football games. My wife goes to all the football games, blah, blah, blah. So I was very invested as well, mostly just be for the sake of my own household. Uh, but I, it produced a very fun basketball team to watch. And I freaking hate sore winners. I have mad respect for coaches and players that show sportsmanship and class in winning and losing. And I, one of the things I hate, I would just jump on Mike's rant, is the big freaking crybabies and it's multiplied by 10 when they are the winner of the game. I hate it when I play a game with somebody and they're like, I'm losing, I'm losing, I'm losing, I'm losing. And then they win and they not just win, but they win by a lot. And it's like, dude, can you shut the fuck up? Like for the whole game, like, please. <laughs> yeah, and I this is one of my very good friends that does this. And I just started calling him out on it. So he stopped doing it because I'm like, dude, you're probably going to win. Please stop saying it. Um, and then and he's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And then he finally like chilled on it, and then he would win. And it's like, see, see. So if you don't want me to give you a hard time about it, because I'm the kind of person that, especially if it's it's a friend of mine that games like that, I would rather tell you what bothers me instead of like letting it seethe and stew. So then we can just kind of hash it out, right? And we and then it's all out in the open, and there's no hard feelings afterwards. Um, yeah. But I hate I. Freaking hate crybaby winners. Um, Mike, your rant is well deserved. The just... only thing worse than a sore loser is a sore winner. Dan oh, Harley, the, it's, a, it's way worse. Yeah. Just shut up. <laughs> just shut up. Win with class. Win That's with all. class. That's it. Usually when I win, I'm like, I can't believe I won. Uh, yeah. 
You know, that's awesome. That was fun, guys. Hope that was good. Well, you were complaining about losing through the whole game? Oh. Correct. Right, which is why I rarely ever complain about losing for the whole game. Um, yeah, I like staying humble when I win. Yeah. No I'd rather everybody sit down and play again. Yeah. I, you know? I, I'm here I'm here to, experience, uh, to, to enjoy my time with you, not to win. Yeah. Correct. Like, Correct. I'm trying to because that's the purpose, but I don't care if I do. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, he uh, he did push a, one of his players, um, but yeah. yeah. Evan's oh, really yeah. good. I don't know if you know Evan Halbert. John, do you know I Evan? Do. I yeah. do. Uh, I met him at Gamma a couple years ago. I was actually on his uh, playtesting thing for <laughs> Java Dragons. Oh, right. I on. actually have to disagree with Evan. I am far more humble than he is. <laughs> Here we go. And... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah bob knows that he's a million times more humble than thou art uh if we're just gonna go weird owl with it um but anyways that's a really good nice way to cap off the show john you uh dude for just uh, like we've had a couple of emails back and forth but they've been pretty brief and like yeah. hey when are you coming on uh to get to hang out with you um it's been wonderful. Uh, it's been. I've also had a great time. I hope, yeah. Hopefully, you felt comfortable and welcome. Yeah. Uh, like that's an environment that you know, Mike and I really strive to create. We really just like hanging out, and um, I love meeting designers, and like I love hearing about your process and what drives you, and how that brings, you know, the how that uh, forms the games that you bring, you know, to the table and everything, and. Um, so I really appreciate you just being open with us and hanging out with us and talking about that and and a Absolutely. baller baller pick for a top ten man oh, that was a good one thank you thank you I, yeah I had a lot of fun um you were both great hosts and uh, no no yeah, no I, you don't say I was that. really nervous I was really nervous <laughs> for like the first like ten minutes and after that it all went away and then I was just deal. talking to some talking to some guys about some great games and uh, that's it. Yeah, and thank you for having me. It does uh, mean a lot. I, I'm not very good at like networking or whatever. I like went a hundred percent into design to like my own detriment. Like I was like, you should probably be like a little social. And I was like, well, I'll, I'll cross that bridge when we get there. Or, you know, so. And John, I'm I'm dead serious about uh, wanting to play and and even cover. I found Bigfoot. Uh, I'm so serious that when we first mentioned that like two and a half hours ago. I've already copied Thing 12's email and posted it in Tim's inbox. I'm so emailing them the second we're this. done. I'm emailing uh, them the thank, second thank we're you. done. And here's the other thing, John. If you've got games coming up and you want to talk about them, shoot shoot us an email and uh, we will we will get you on the show, man. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. The networking's already been done. You just got to message us. Yeah. Yeah. You, you've I, got uh, friends here. So oh, thank you. I, I appreciate that very much. Yeah. I've got a lot of stuff coming. Uh, there's a couple of games from a couple of publishers. You guys saw that. Uh, uh, I have three that are on my BGG, but um, I think I have like eight signed, uh, four with Thing 12. Uh, so hopefully things nice. will start speeding up. Um, I also just, yeah, it's I've got a lot in the works, and uh, you'll probably be seeing a lot of me, hopefully, if I'm doing everything right. John, I hope you're so busy you don't have time for us. I want to have you on the show, but I just hope you're so damn busy that it's like, John, whenever we can get you on, dude, let's get you on. I really I appreciate that very much. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, please, if you got stuff, you've got a platform here. Uh, we'd love to. We we are just we're just fans, right? We're fans of designers. We're fans of publishers. And we love hanging out and supporting you guys. Uh, Thank you. hundred percent. So. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. And and uh I've got to reach Eric. We've got to have Eric on the show sometime. That's a missed yeah. opportunity. Eric's a really good dude. Um again, hung out with him once, got to talk to him, and I just thought he and his wife were very cool. There's only so uh, many Wednesdays. I know, right? And then get game yeah. and we need to cross over with you guys. You need to come on to our they live. They are stream. great. I love them very much. I um, I love, for sure. dude, no, <laughs> anybody that comes on the chat and just starts throwing fireballs, it is spicy like that. It's just, it's just, I just love it. I just love it. Um, so Eric and, uh, I've got to figure out how to get a hold of, uh, of the, uh, of the get game and, um, and get that. But I think I'm Facebook friends with Eric. So I'll be able to coordinate that pretty easy. 
but I want to, I want to hang out with those people. And you uh, clearly, John, you've surrounded yourself with like an amazing community. And, and, uh, and uh, so I'm really excited. I'm really excited for you. I cannot wait, cannot wait to play your game games, plural. Yeah. It's a lot. Uh, <laughs> so, a lot. so no, dude, that's great. That's great. Uh, so thank you again for your time. Thanks for coming thank on. You. Thanks for, for doing this. Mike, thank you for doing all the tech work. Thanks for being the BGG bitch. Love that. He's the man. Mike no is problem. the man. No problem. It was a blast. Happy Mike, day. Mike is the uh, he's the children in the Snowpiercer train that keeps this thing running. Uh, sure. <laughs> if you haven't seen, yeah. yes, I have. Yeah. Okay, that's kind yeah. of a spoiler. Whoops. Um, but, <laughs> but. I have a very dark sense of humor. So I love it. I can't help it. Mike, you should watch Snowpiercer for no okay. particular reason. Uh, very. All right. Uh, Mike, you got anything else before we sign off? Uh, no, it's been a blast. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. As always, we really thank appreciate you. Really. you. Uh, make sure you go follow John D. Wood. Go to BGG. Look up his games. Look him up start following his projects uh, because it sounds like there's going to be some really good stuff uh, coming uh, down the pipe. And yeah. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that a dude doesn't get a bunch of games signed that quick. If he sucks, I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> I don't know if it's been quick. Yeah. But, well, uh, you've been working at it a long time, but it it, it feels it, like a lot of dominoes are all going to start fall, falling down, right? Uh, that is yeah. the hope. I do want to just like put like a torrent of amazing games out there, and people mm -hmm. are just like, "What is going on?" Because uh, I kind of want to everybody that like gave me the chance. I want to bring them all up together. Like, I want my publishers to all get big together. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Um, oh, that's so great. We'll see. That's great. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> its feet aren't actually that big. It's all about those small hands by comparison. The Bigfoot. Um, anyways, thank you so much, John. Again, appreciate you. Uh, love you. to have you back on uh, anytime you want. When you got yeah. stuff, when you got projects, you don't got projects, we'll bother you. We'll be like, I hey, man, that. when are you going to come on and hang out with us? Yeah. Mike, thank you again for all your hard work and yet another awesome, awesome Wednesday. Uh, mm. Crushing it, dude. It was great. Thank you both. All right. For the Board Game Rundown, I've been Tim. I was Mike. Mike. There we go. I'm John D. Wood. Play my yes! game. Yes! <laughs> Play his games. Check him out. <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. Thank you. We'll see you guys. Good next job, Stonemeyer. A 7.3. Repeating. Heating, heating, heating. Heating, heating, heating. Heating, heating, heating.